It's time for Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Wolverine Football is also brought to you by the Triangle Bar and Grill, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home, the Law Offices of Owen Seaman, LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek, Bush Brothers Car Care, LG3 Entertainment, Web Landings, and ABOS Opticians. Now it's time for the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. A pleasant good evening and welcome live. We are at the Wolverine of the Turtle Creek Stadium, home of your Woodland Hills Wolverines. Adam Gusky alongside Eric Shuley on the call for you as the Woodland Hills Wolverines take on the Seneca Valley Raiders in a interclassification matchup on homecoming Friday in Turtle Creek. Woodland Hills 1-6 and six on the season, 0-5 oh within their conference. Meanwhile, Seneca Valley is 3-4 and four overall, 3-3 three and three within 6A play. Last week, Woodland Hills, they uh, got the monkey off of their back with a 28-2 victory on the road at Kiskey. Meanwhile, Seneca Valley got the win against Hemfield, 40-12 on the road in Greensburg. And Eric, I'm sure it was great to witness the Wolverines get a win a week ago, and even more so, I'm sure it was great for the Wolverines to get that first victory of the season. Yeah, that's right. This year, but they, they fought very hard and they got the victory against Kiski. Although non-conference, it didn't come to mean anything when it comes to conference play. It's still, after going 0 and 6, getting that win was huge for Woodland Hills. And another non-conference matchup tonight for Woodland Hills. And Eric, you know, obviously one thing that we think about when we talk about conference play for the Wolverines is all of the leads they squandered after leading whether it be in the second quarter or at halftime, and they watch those leads dwindle away and lead to conference losses. Yeah, those four halftime leads that they lost, they could be in a completely different position right now if they were able to pull off victories in those games. But they were able to play great on defense, especially last week. The offense kept on from what it was doing for the most part. Deontay Williams has done a great job at uh, quarterback, the sophomore stepping in. But the defense overall just looked fantastic, not giving up any points. The only points for Kiski came on that safety that they got from the intentional grounding in the end zone. We're going to step away for a couple of minutes, and when we return, it will be the kickoff between the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd District since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to SenatorCosta.com. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale has recently been named among the 33 best sandwich shops in America. But folks in the Woodland Hills communities have known that for over 80 years. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're sure to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been serving families in the Woodland Hills community since 1905 and is a member of the Hall of Excellence of the National Funeral Directors Association. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home now offers crematory services at their Turtle Creek location. Families choosing cremation can have added peace of mind knowing that their loved one never leaves the care of Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home. For nearly 115 years, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been honored to serve local families and to be a proud partner 
of the Woodland Hills communities. Woodland Hills football is brought to you in part by the law offices of Owen Seaman. Owen is a Woodland Hills alumnus who studied law at Duquesne University and has been practicing law in the Pittsburgh area for over 15 years. Attorney Owen Seaman's experience encompasses virtually every facet of criminal defense. If you find yourself in need of criminal defense representation, call Owen at 412-721-0412 or visit owenthelawyer.com. <laughs> Excella Health wants to know, how can we help you today? Can we help you find a doctor? Schedule a same-day appointment. Choose just the right service for your health concern? As your health care partner, Excella offers hundreds of primary care and specialty doctors, along with outpatient testing, rehab, and nationally recognized heart care, surgery, and orthopedics. To learn more, visit ExcellaHealth.org or call 1-877-771-1234. Tired of a dirty car? Mr. Magic Car Wash will have your vehicle looking new again in just minutes, even those tough to clean wheels. Try us out at any one of our five convenient South Hills locations for a car wash you won't soon forget. Mr. Magic Car Wash, clean, shiny, and dry every time. Thanks for tuning in to the pregame show on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Woodland Hills football is presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Wolverine football is also brought to you by the Triangle Bar and Grill, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home, the Law Offices of Owen Seaman, LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek, Bush Brothers Car Care, LG3 Entertainment, Web Landings, and ABOSS Opticians. Now it's time for kickoff. Set for kickoff as the Wolverines take on the Seneca Valley Raiders in a WPIAL interclassificational matchup between the visiting Seneca Valley Raiders and your Woodland Hills Wolverines. Painting the picture for our audience listening on our WHFN app. Near sideline are the Seneca Valley Raiders. They wear their road white jerseys with the uh, Carolina blue numerals and trim. The black pants with the pink socks in red. Uh, recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They wear the white helmets with the numbers on one side and an SV on the other side of their lids. Far sideline are the Woodland Hills Wolverines and they wear their black uniforms, black jerseys, black pants, turquoise numerals with the white trim and the turquoise helmets with the black ears and stripes. That's been the basic uniform for Woodland Hills for the last 30 plus years. Woodland Hills will kick off to begin this football game. Deontay Robertson Looks to be the one who will be kicking off for Woodland Hills while Seneca Valley sends a pair of Raiders back to return, including Ethan West on the far sideline. And on the near hash is Brandon Weaver. Like we said in our first segment of the pregame show, Woodland Hills got their first win of the season, and that's a big bonus as they head into this final non-conference matchup before they wrap up the season with a pair of conference games at home against Moon next week and then on the road at Chartiers Valley to finish up the regular season. And we are underway in Turtle Creek, PA, as the ball will slide through the legs of the return man. Then it's scooped up by Nick Cook, and Cook takes to the far boundary, where he'll be strung out by a pair of Wolverines. And it'll be first and 10 for Seneca Valley with the ball and thrown 28-yard line. I yeah, know. I think one key tonight, Adam, for the Wolverines, you've got to keep off those penalties. Last week, that was the only thing that the Wolverines really did wrong overall. Ran into some uh, stalling drives there in the first half, and but still able to put up 28 points. The defense played great, as I mentioned in the pregame show. So he's got to avoid those penalties. There were way too many of them last week, and you cannot have a lot of penalties and beat a team like Seneca Valley. The Raiders, they come straight from the sideline to the line of scrimmage where Gabe Lawson will run the QB spot for Seneca Valley. He'll set in the pistol with Ethan West, who now settles next to him in a true shotgun. Two receivers near side left, one receiver to the far boundary right as the ball's on the right hash, and we'll see the quarterback, Lawson, keep it himself. He'll try to go up the gut, met a yard deep in the backfield. No gain on the play. Maybe a loss as Rodney Stubbs makes the stop for Woodland Hills. Yeah, Gabe Lawson, 46 rush attempts on the year, so he's not afraid to tuck it and run it. Just over 130 yards on the year, so he doesn't have a lot of yardage, but uh, he certainly has a decent amount of attempts. He likes to run the ball. He can also pass the ball, so he's definitely a dual-threat quarterback. We saw that last year. 
as the Wolverines fell to Seneca Valley and Cranberry 24 to seven in that game, but they only trailed 10 to seven at the half. So they'll actually spot the ball right near the original line of scrimmage. So it's second down and 10 near the 28 yard line. Two receivers split right, one to the near side left. Lawson in the shotgun. He'll put the ball into the belly of uh, the lone setback, Ethan West, who goes up the gut and picks up maybe a yard or two out to the 30-yard line where the tackle is made by Jeremy Thomas. Yeah, Ethan West, one of the main backs for Seneca Valley. The junior has emerged this year. After last year, Matt Stanger took the majority of carries, and they're about they're sharing carries this year, Stanger and West. So you'll just see a heavy dosage of both of them. Both decently sized, fast running backs, but the Wolverines do a great job there of containing West. Seneca Valley brings about four players on from the sidelines for this third down and eight play from the 30 yard line. The line to gain is the 43, or rather the 38, and a timeout is called by Seneca Valley head coach timeout. Ron Bushel. Seneca Valley, they're first. Timeout on the field. We'll step away to 10.25 to play first quarter. We're scoreless. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd District since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to SenatorCosta.com. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Sidecars to either side of the quarterback, Gabe Lawson, two receivers split left on third down and eight. Lawson off of play action, pressured. Now he'll run to his right-hand side, has a receiver open on the far boundary, but instead look to go deeper for McCowan, but uh, the... Pass can't make it to McCowan too far to the right-hand side, and that brings up fourth and eight, and the punt unit comes on for Seneca Valley. Yeah, nice job by the Wolverines defense there. You're right, Adam. They had a few open men there along the sideline. I think you were talking about Matt Stanger there. He was wide open, but uh, Lawson did not see him. Tried to go for the deep man and uh, just overthrew him there. So great start for the Wolverines defense, picking up right where they left off last week against Kiske. Yeah, it was Stanger, the six-foot, 200-pound senior, running all by himself down that far boundary, but Lawson didn't see him. Lawson, also the punter, catches a high snap and gets the punt away. And it'll be fair, caught by the Wolverines at the 40-yard line. A nice job by Armani Bailey to keep his focus on the football. Fair catching it at the 40, where Woodland Hills will start first down and 10 with 10.09 to play here in the first frame. Yeah, again, great start for the defense. Hopefully the offense can do the same. They got good field position here starting at the 40. See what the sophomore quarterback, Deontay Williams, can do here as the uh, didn't take long for him to get in the end zone last week against Kiske the first time the Wolverines had the ball. So Williams will set in the shotgun, side cars to either side, one receiver to the short side, left to the near side right. Hard count by Williams, low snap, and he will hand off, and the ball carrier over right tackle picks up a handful of yards, give him six actually as Armani Bailey is going to get out to the 47-yard line, ultimately a gain of seven and second and a very manageable three. Yeah, great job on first down for the Wolverines. Opening up some holes there. Amani Bailey taking the first carry. Usually you see Will Clark take the first carry, but uh, when you got a guy who can run like that and as talented as, as, as a Bailey is, why not get him the ball right away? Again, two receivers right, one receiver to the short side left. Now a motion man from right to left, and he'll take it on the jet sweep. That is Jeffrey Williams getting to the line of scrimmage, maybe surging ahead for a gain of a half a yard or so before he is brought down. On the tackle is... Uh, Evan Smith, linebacker for Seneca Valley, 6'1", 190-pound senior. Yeah, Jeffrey Williams, very talented senior for Woodland Hills, and you love to get him involved in this offense, but uh, Seneca Valley is going to be fooled rarely on a play like that as they read that very well and covered it with all their size and speed. Again, Williams is in the shotgun with sidecars to either side. Jeffrey Williams motions from left to right, play action off of that jet sweep. Instead, the handoff will go to William Clark, who takes the ball into Raiders territory, and he'll get it past the 50 to the 49. It's enough for Wilson Hill's first down 
And the Wolverines drive continues now inside of Seneca Valley Real Estate. Nice job blocking by Woodland Hills up front there and a little bit of the deception there with the fake and the jet sweep. And you got Armani Bailey back there. It's keeping, uh, it's keeping Seneca Valley on their heels a bit here early. And off will go to Armani Bailey and Bailey wiggles his way back to the line of scrimmage before he is brought down. Tackle again by Evan Smith, the linebacker. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. Seneca Valley has been pretty stingy on defense all season long, so interesting to see what this Woodland Hills offense can do against the top 6A defense. Second and 10, two receivers right, one receiver to the short side left. Williams with sidecars to either side, looks left the whole way, throws to his left-hand side, the pass is complete. Over on that far sideline, looks like it's Scipio carrying it inside of the 40, near the first down flag at the 39. The spot on that far sideline says it's just shy of the line to gain, so it will be third down and about a half a yard. Now the referee says first down. Interesting there, I think that's the correct call. If you look at the replay, it definitely looks like he had that first down and they're gonna make the correct call there in my opinion and get Wolverines a first down as they move inside the 40. Yeah, the uh, linesman on the far sideline spotted the ball shy of the line to gain. Referee John Carson says something else and it uh, will be first and 10 for Woodland Hills and they go to the ground where Armani Bailey is only able to get back to the line of scrimmage before being brought down by uh, Matt Stanger. Yeah, had success on that. Opening play to Bailey on the inside handoff, but uh, that time and the time before it, uh, Seneca Valley has really stuffed that up quick. So it's going to be tough to run up the middle against these guys, especially when you're missing uh, Dewan Housen from your homer on that offensive line. Two receivers right, one to the short side left as Williams runs to his right hand side, sets his feet as he's hit as he releases the football, and it hits the face mask of the receiver Gavin Yarborough. And I bet you he wishes he had that one back because there was nobody behind him, and it just clanged off the cage. Yeah, that's unfortunate there for the Wolverines. Kevin Yarbo was open. Deontay Williams took a hit on the backside. You hope he's okay from that, but just a nice throw by Williams. I, you take a look at the replay or maybe get an idea of what happened there. Yarbo, you're right, Adam, just hit him right in the face mask. Unfortunately, unable to come down with that. Now a tough third down here for Woodland Hills. So it's third and 10 for Woody Hyde. The ball at the 39-yard line. The line to gain is the 29. The ball's on the left hash. As the Wolverines go right to left across your screen or internet browser. Straight drop back for Williams as the Wolverines set up the screen and it looks great for the beginning at least. Cutting to the near side right is William Clark wiggling his way inside of the 30. He's got enough for the first down as he's shoved out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Gain of 12 on the screen and it's first and 10 for Woody High. Great play call there for Woodland Hills. Love the screen pass. Tried it last week against Kiski. Worked to perfection with Taylor Brooks for a touchdown. Got called back for a penalty. This time works to perfection again. No penalty. William Clark. Great throw from Deontay Williams. Clark gets the first down with his legs and the offense is moving. So it's first and 10. Ball's on the right hash for Woodland Hills at the Seneca Valley 27 yard line. Side cars to both sides of Williams. Hard count by Deontay Williams. Handoff Clark running left. Got some room over on that far side. In the inside of the 20, inside of the 15, the 10, the 5, and into the end zone for Woodland Hills touchdown of 27 yards. Yeah, you could see that hole from our angle. Just a great, great job opening up that hole for William Clark, and he hit it with all the speed that he has. You saw that speed last week on that 99-yard touchdown run. There again, great vision, and takes it to the house for a 6-0 lead for the Wolverines to start this one. Perfect counter. The guard pulled, kicked out the end. The uh, tackle pulled up through the hole, and then William Clark took it around the end and then cut it upfield at the right moment, and into the end zone he went. Woodland Hill 6, and Seneca Valley 0. Wolverine's going for two here as they send two receivers right and one to the near side left. And again, sidecars to both sides of Deontay Williams. Motion man is Williams from right to left. They'll play action on the uh, end around. Instead, they'll go to William Clark, who gets met after a gain of one, but that's not enough for the two-point conversion. So it'll stay 6-0 with 6.28 to play in the first frame. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale has recently been named among the 33 best sandwich shops in America. But folks in the Woodland Hills communities have known that for over 80 years. 
The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swiss Vale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're sure to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 27-yard touchdown run for William Clark. Puts Woodland Hills on the board first. Six to nothing over the Seneca Valley Raiders. 6.28 to play in the first frame. And Clark taking that counter to the left-hand side. Great blocking, good vision, and good speed into the end zone for the Wolverines' tailback. And over and kick to that far sideline where it'll again be returned by Nick Cook for the Raiders, who takes it out to the 35, maybe the 36-yard line, where the tackle is made by Sean Davis. First and 10 for Seneca Valley at the 36. Another opportunity here for the Wolverines' defense to keep going as they were from last week. Great start on Seneca Valley's opening drive, and hopefully they can continue that. Great game last week by uh, Julius Brown, Rodney Stubbs, William Chamberlain in the secondary, along with Sean Carter. Just some great play all around, and, but a lot tougher opponent, if you ask me, tonight here with, six out, with the 6A Seneca Valley Raiders. One receiver to the short side right, two split to the wide side left. Now the motion to an empty set as Lawson's going to try to go up the gut, and he is met a yard deep in the backfield. A nice play by defensive lineman Thomas Sheard, the 6'4", 242-pound senior, knife through there, took an offensive lineman with him and made the play. Yeah, Sheard, you can watch there on the replay, breaks through that block, just a great job, and looks like he uh, breaks through with their Josh Catlinberger, their D1 recruit there, so great job by Thomas Sheard. He's been an unsung hero for the Wolverines since last year. He does so much on both lines, offensive and defensive. Catlinberger, 6'5", 290-pound senior, and like you said, Looking to play Division I football at the next level. Motion man from left to right. Instead, they'll go to the uh, back up the gut, and that's Ethan West. No room for him as he is met and Brock down by Idris Godlock. Uh, not much to uh, gain there as he only picks up three from the uh, 36 to the 39-yard line, bringing up third down and a manageable seven for the Woodland Hills defense. Just don't get beat over the top in this circumstance. Yeah, we know the Wolverines have struggled on third downs, especially when they're third and longs. And this is definitely not third and long, but it is a passing down, so we'll see what the defense can do. Trips left, one receiver right. Straight drop back as the Raiders try to set up the screen, but the Wolverines put too much pressure on Lawson, but Lawson has some room running to his right-hand side. He's inside of Woodland Hills territory and finally forced out of bounds inside of the Wolverines' 35 near the 33-yard line. And a big pickup there by Gabe Lawson. Sets up Seneca Valley at the 32. Yeah, you're right, Adam, just over-pursued there. You know, Taiwan Milton came up the middle. Rodney Stubbs was right by him. You wish maybe Milton would have gone out wide there along the edge, and he would have been able to seal off that and not let Lawson get by him. But he comes up the middle, and Lawson takes advantage of that wide open space. Big first down for Seneca Valley. Two receivers left, tight end to the right. Power pistol formation favoring the left-hand side as the handoff goes to West, and he'll lower his shoulders, carrying it inside of the 30 to the 27-yard line. Tackle on the play by Julius Brown, but it's second down and five for Seneca Valley at the 27. Yeah, Raiders will certainly take that every time. Nice job on first down for them. Uh, Woodland Hills got to tighten up here, though, as the Raiders getting close to the red zone after that big third down run by Lawson. Ball ultimately spotted at the 26 yard line, so it's second and just over four yards. Shotgun this time as Lawson's gonna hand off to West who can't break free. He is met in the backfield and held up by Antoine Meredith who finally dumps into the turf. Uh, short loss on the play back to the 27 yard line and it's third in the true five now. Yeah, they definitely gave him a lot of forward progress. There's hard to see from our angle. It looked like maybe he lost a little more than that, but still great job by Woodland Hills sealing that up, clogging that hole and not letting him get anywhere. Now it's a tough decision what you do, run the ball or pass the ball if you're Seneca Valley. Just under four minutes to play in the first quarter. It's Woodland Hills six and Seneca Valley zero. Adam Gusky, Eric truly on the call for you on the Woodland Hills football network. One receiver split left, two to the short side right. Tight end on the left of the formation. 
West settles just behind Lawson and will take the handoff. Cutting to his left-hand side into open greenery inside of the 10, the 5, and into the end zone for a 27-yard touchdown. So the Wolverines score on a 27-yard touchdown run, and Ethan West and the Seneca Valley Raiders answer right back with the same. Yeah, unfortunate there for Woodland Hills. They uh, looked like they, they went for the run and just sealed off the left side so well there. And West found that found that wide open hole on the left side and just too much speed and not enough Wolverines there to catch them. Adam Davies, 5'10", junior kicker, on to attempt the PAT. Lawson appears to be the holder. Good snap, hold down, the kick is up, and that kick fades to the right, but is still inside of that right upright and good. And with 3.24 to play first quarter, Seneca Valley leads Woodland Hills 7-6. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Life has its ups and downs. There are times when you or a loved one needs help. That's why you should know the name LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center. Located just minutes from the Monroeville Mall, the LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, has been known by locals for many years, and they excel in reputation, rehabilitation, recuperation, and residential living. The help and answers you need are just a phone call away at 412-825-9000. Also on the web at lgar.org. LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, a a name you should know and a name you can trust. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 27-yard touchdown run by tailback Ethan West as he took the handoff and ran to his left-hand side, turned the corner as that left side was sealed off quite well, and it was a foot race, and Armani Bailey wasn't catching West into the end zone. He went, the PAT up and in for Adam Davies. And it's a 7-6 lead for the Seneca Valley Raiders as the teams exchange 27-yard TD runs. End over end kick will be caught by William Clark at the 9-yard line. He carries it out across the 20. The 25 cuts it to the far boundary, 30 to the 40 as it's a foot race to the far boundary and out of bounds. Finally, Clark will be shoved out by the kicker, Davies, at the 49-yard line. So great field position for Woodland Hills. William Clark can do it all. He's a great running back. He's a great return man. He plays well, very well on defense for the Wolverines. And there you saw his ability to take a return. You saw, you saw his speed and ability to avoid tackles as well. Just a great job right right, uh, right about at midfield now at the 49-yard line. Great starting field position again for Woodland Hills. Hopefully they're able to take advantage of it. 3-14 to play first quarter at 7-6 Seneca Valley. Two receivers right, one to the short side left. The ball's on the left hash. Williams in the shotgun with sidecars to either side. Williams rolls to his right, look back to his left-hand side as he picks up some protection. Now looks to cut it back to that far boundary again. Big open field hit by a uh, offensive lineman, and Deontay Williams will wiggle his way inside of the 50 to the 49-yard line, and it'll be second down and eight as Williams was able to make something out of nothing. And yeah, nice job on staying with him by Seneca Valley. Deontay Williams is so talented and he's so versatile. A lot of times he's able to break away from those plays and get extra big yardage there. But Seneca Valley just, just look, if you take a look at the replay, just pursues him so well and stays with him. Nice block there for Woodland Hills. Good thing there was no penalty on that for a blindside block. I think it was legal, perfectly yeah, absolutely. legal. I mean, at, at that point, Eric, 100% legal. Right, right. You, you know we've seen that call before, though. Yeah. So. Well, I, I mean, at that point, the defensive lineman had really started to trail Williams, and Jeremy Thomas made him, met him face-to-face -face exactly. in that instance. And off this time is going to go to Talon Brooks, who runs to the left-hand side and maybe picks up a yard from the 49 to the 48. We'll see where the ball's ultimately spotted by the official on that far side. No gain brings up third down and eight as the clock continues to wind here in the first quarter. Seven to six, Seneca Valley on top of Woodland Hills. Yeah, we know Seneca Valley is going to do a good job against that run. But uh, see if the Wolverines can get this key third down here. Two receivers right, one to the short side left. Side cars to either side of Williams again. Low snap as he runs to his right hand side. Settles his feet. Thought about throwing it, now does toss it down that far boundary and a pass intended for, I believe, Scipio over there on that far sideline. And the official says that Scipio got his hands underneath it. Now another official says no, no catch. Oh, interesting there. Uh, 
didn't I, I didn't see him make the incomplete call right away. I saw the other official coming down like he was going to mark the ball there for a, for a catch. Yeah, the official on the far sideline, the judge over there, looked like uh, it, he may have caught it, but the umpire who had a better view from, you know, favoring the right-hand side of Scipio, and, uh, you know, from our triangle bar and grill replay, does at least look like the ball slides through his hands and then he traps it against his body. So fourth and eight, good punt snap, and the punt is away by Williams, a wobbler. That'll be fair caught inside of the 20. And it'll be first down and 10 for Seneca Valley at the 19-yard line. Great job by Deontay Williams there, getting that punt off so well as he was getting converged on by uh, some Seneca Valley Raiders. Beautiful night for football in Western Pennsylvania. A clear, cool night. Temperature in the mid-60s, and that temperature will continue to drop as the night progresses. By the end of the game, we should be in the mid to upper 50s. Sunset a little before kickoff and a light breeze has been blowing throughout Western PA throughout the afternoon and now into the evening. Good to have you along with us here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Adam Gusky, Eric Shuley on the call for you as the Wolverines host the Seneca Valley Raiders on homecoming. And the ball initially was fair caught at the 19. The official spotted it at the 19. Now they put it at the 20. Hopefully that yard doesn't come into play later. A fumble, though, as the uh, quarterback tried to pull it out of the belly of an end-around man as he went to the line of scrimmage, lost and lost it, and a Wolverine came out of there with it. It's William Clark who scooped up the loose ball for Woody High right around that line of scrimmage. And let's see if we can get a clearer picture of this on our triangle bar and grill replay. Big turnover for the Wolverines as we take a second look. Exactly, I haven't tried to pull it out and just never really was able to get his keep his hands on it. Scored it out and big recovery there by William Clark. Woodland Hills set up inside the red zone now. Yeah, it seemed like a circumstance where West would have been well served to feign taking the ball. That may have been able to settle the ball in the hands of quarterback Lawson. Instead, the fumble by Lawson gives Woodland Hills the ball at the 19 inside of the Seneca Valley red zone. Straight drop back for Williams, looks left, throws left. Woodland Hills going for the TD on first down, and it is caught in the end zone for a Woodland Hills touchdown. Nice adjustment as the ball is in the air by Tariq Scipio, and the Wolverines reclaim the lead 12 to seven. And just a great pass there by Deontay Williams. Tariq Scipio, little hand fighting going on there, but it looks like it was both ways, so it looks legit to me. And just a nice grab by Scipio. We've seen it all year long. He's great hands for the Wolverines. Very nice, talented junior there. He readjusts to the ball. Great catch. Touchdown, Woodland Hills. Nineteen-yard touchdown pass. Woodland puts Woodland Hills on top by five. They look to make it a seven-point advantage on this two-point conversion attempt. Play action on the end around, and after a few fakes on the handoff, the Ball carrier will take it into the end zone for a two-point conversion for Woodland Hills. It's Taylor Brooks who finally took that handoff across the goal line. And Woodland Hills on top by seven, 14 to seven with 1.15 to play in the first frame. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Bush Brothers Car Care Center in Swissvale has been a Monongahela Avenue institution for four decades. Bush Brothers is a full-service mechanic and tire shop for all types of vehicles. Whether you need mechanical work, an alignment, state inspection and emissions testing, new tires, or just an oil change, Bush Brothers is the place for you. Bush Brothers Car Care Center, Monongahela Avenue in Swissvale, or give Martin and Jason a call at 412-351-5342. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Wolverines take advantage of a fumble by the Seneca Valley Raiders, and on first and 10 from the 19, Deontay Williams looks left and throws to that left-hand side where Tariq Scipio adjusts to the football and catches it for a Woody High touchdown. Two-point uh, run by Taylor Brooks. And the Wolverines on top by seven, and then on the kickoff, a squib kick rolls to that far boundary, and the ball was loose for quite a while, and finally it will roll out of bounds, and that's fortunate for Seneca Valley because Woodland Hills was right near that football before it rolled out of bounds. Kishon Davis almost was able to recover that for Woody High. And he 
Keyshawn Davis got so close there as Connor Hayes for Seneca Valley, unable to jump on it and keep it for Seneca Valley. Keyshawn Davis came in and then it just squirted off of him and out of bounds, fortunately for the Raiders. But the def uh, the uh, Woodland Hills defense got a lot of momentum right now. They got to keep it up, maybe force another turnover here. One receiver right, a tight end and two receivers left. Sidecar to the left-hand side of Lawson as he rolls to his left, settles and throws back across his body and the uh, pass is broken up by Tariq Scipio as he was step for step with the intended receiver, Connor Lizchuk. Yeah, nice job by Scipio, good coverage there. Couldn't break that pass up, almost able to get the interception there. That's the second time today we've seen Lawson try to throw across his body to no avail. He didn't have his feet set in that circumstance, and that really allowed Scipio to go up, high point the ball, and almost have the opportunity to come down with the INT. Two receivers left, power pistol, as a tight end to the right of the formation. Handoff will go to Ethan West, who runs to the left and cuts it up the field, and he is met by a host of black jerseys near the 40-yard line, and they will say that's where his forward progress finally stops, pushing and shoving after the play. That's down at the bottom of the pile for Woodland Hills is Antoine Meredith. up third down and about two as again the Raiders go to the ground and Ethan West wiggles through traffic drives his way to the 41 close to the 42 yard line and the officials will say just enough for the first down for the Raiders to the 42. Uh, first look did not like he was able to get that but uh, officials give him a pretty good spot looked like right there maybe at the end with that forward progress he was able to just get it for a first down, but I thought they might mark him a little bit short, but nonetheless, Seneca Valley keeps the drive alive. They might squeeze one more play in in the first, we'll see here. Looks like the Raiders may be happy to go to the second quarter. Down by seven though, as the quarterback Lawson stares at that clock, and that will do it for the first frame. We head to the second quarter with Woodland Hills on top of Seneca Valley, 14 to seven. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek is the official pizza of the Wolverina and has been a family tradition since 1971. Fox's Pizza also features tasty appetizers, fresh salads, as well as mouthwatering hoagies and sandwiches. Fox's Pizza in Turtle Creek is conveniently located in Penn Plaza, so stop in to pick up lunch or dinner or call to place your delivery order now at 412-823-9960. From our den to your den, it's Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek. Set to begin quarter number two, 14 to seven, Woodland Hills on top of Seneca Valley. The Raiders have the ball first down and 10 at their own 42 yard line. Fourth possession of the game for Seneca Valley. Their first possession ended in a punt. Their second possession with a 27 yard touchdown run. Their third one a fumble by quarterback Gabe Lawson who now looks to his right hand side throwing to Ethan West who cuts to the near side right and drives through a Wolverine and will be brought down near the midfield strike. Credit tackle to Eshawn Carter. Also involved on the tackle Tiglin Brooks for Woody Hines. Second down and about three for the Raiders. Yeah, just not enough defenders far up to the line of scrimmage there in the secondary for the Wolverines, and that swing pass works to perfection for Seneca Valley, and they get a nice chunk of yardage on first down. Ball's on the right hash now as the Raiders split two receivers left. Power Pistol favors the right-hand side as the handoff goes to the tailback. This time it's Matt Stanger who has nowhere to go, stacked up near the line of scrimmage, maybe surges his way forward for a gain of about one. And that'll bring up third down and two as the tackle will be made by Michael Jones, the 5'10", 227-pound senior D lineman. Yeah, great job by Jones and Savon Gibner and Idris Gulak there and Jeremy, Jeremy Thomas there. Just a great, doing a great job playing without, as I mentioned, without Dewan Howes on that defensive line and Joshua Rawlings, the D1 recruits, played a lot on the, at defensive end for Wilton Hills this year. Both of them absent from this game and defensive line's doing great so far. 
First time we see Lawson step under center today, and he will hand off to Stanger, who is met near the line of scrimmage, but has enough momentum to carry the ball inside of the 48 to the 47 yard line and the gain of three and it's a first down for Seneca Valley's tailback. Stanger looked like Michael Jones on the tackle. No check that that is uh, Idris Goodlock. Yeah, Goodlock got through there at him and almost had him for about no gain, but uh, Stanger was able to fight through and slip through the tackle to get just enough for a first down as Goodlock never let go of that leg, but uh, Stanger was a little too tough and athletic to be taken down quickly there. Twins to either side, sidecar to the right-hand side of quarterback Lawson, motion man, brings trips to the right of the formation. That motion man catches the pass and Seth Bake uh, is uh, brought down after picking up a gain of about four. Tackle made by Ishan Carter, the 5'11 junior for Woody High. Yeah, great job reading that by Carter there. That could have been uh, a lot bigger on first down, but does a nice job there, does Carter, breaking through it, making that tackle, wrapping up on, on, on the ankles there. Read the play well, did Carter, coming from his D-back spot, saw the receiver bait coming from left to right. Two receivers left, one to the near side right, and Lawson's going to keep it up uh, the middle and then cuts to his right-hand side inside of the 40 where he's finally brought down at the 39-yard line. Julius Brown in on the tackle, also involved Taylor Brooks. Official over here asking for a timeout, and I'm not sure why. Did a flag come in? Yeah, it looks oh, like a flag, flag back here. Okay. Right around the 25. At Seneca Valley was clapping. It looks like it might be uh, in sportsmanlike conduct against Woodland Hills or something like that. After the play, personal foul on the defense. 15 yard penalty results in the first time. Well, John Carson gives us the information, and the ball will be moved from near the 35 inside of the 25 to the 24 yard line. First and 10 for Seneca Valley as they approach the Woody High red zone. Two receivers left, one to the short side right, balls on the right hash, and a timeout comes from that far sideline as a flag comes in. I think Seneca Valley either had an illegal formation or may have moved early. Check in with John Carson, our referee, to get the confirmation. Sideline warning, Woodland Hills, they're first. Ah, uh, okay. Now, I, I, when I glanced over there and I saw the flag come in, the chain gang was having trouble getting down the field. Eric, anytime the chain gang uh, is impeded, you're going to get that first sideline warning. Exactly. That's what it is. Uh, but you get the warning, so hopefully the Wolverines aren't uh, guilty of that again. Two receivers left, one to the near side right again as Lawson hands it off. West caroms off of a Wolverine and will surge his way forward for a gain of about a yard before he's wrapped up by Jeremy Thomas and pulled back. And he'll spot the ball right around the 23, so a gain of just one brings up second and nine as the clock continues to wind here in the second quarter. Woody High on top by set. Yeah, nice job by the defensive line there, not letting West break through any tackles. Uh, and that penalty was huge there. They got to they gotta make up for that here. Does the defense, and they can't let Seneca Valley into the end zone. That was just a huge penalty there for Seneca Valley. Two receivers right. Tight end to the right of the formation as well as they favor a power pistol to the left-hand side. And now Lawson's going to run to his left as he is bumped into by West, the tailback. Lawson is able to shimmy his way to around the 20-yard line before he is covered up by a Wolverine. Gain of three brings up third down and about a half a dozen. Line to gain is the 14. Yeah, you've got two chances here to get this yardage to Seneca Valley, about six yards here. So we'll see if the Wolverines can cover this play and force them into a tough fourth down here. Taiwan Milton involved in that tackle for Woody High is now it's uh, third down and six. Lawson looks right the whole way, throws to his right-hand side, and he was looking for Connor Lynchick, uh, and the pass is well off the mark, and that brings up fourth down and six. As the QB and receiver not on the same page there. Yeah, definitely not. That was just too hard of a, of a ball there from Lawson, and way too high, and not sure if he expected him to hit that, hit that mark faster there, but that ball was just so far out of bounds, I think it was completely uncatchable. So Woodland Hills now, defense faced with a fourth down. Got to stop this here on Seneca Valley. 
Trips left, one receiver to the short side right. Sidecar to the right-hand side of Lawson. Lawson, straight drop back, looking to set up the screen to the left-hand side. The Wolverines were all over it. No dice as the pass is complete to James Sprentz. He is wrapped up for a one-yard loss. Turnover on downs, and it's Woody High football and a seven-point lead for the home team. Fantastic job by the defense there of Woodland Hills, covering that the little slip screen so well. I've seen it hurt, hurt them in the past, especially against teams like West Allegheny have executed that play so well, but Woodland Hills right there just covers it to perfection, stopping them on a fourth down and the ball back in the offense's hands. Make sure you visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Woodland Hills Football Network. You can watch our games live each and every week. Two receivers split left, one to the far boundary right. Williams in the middle of the field. He's going to delay the handoff, and now the ball carrier for Woodland Hills appears to be William Clark, who drives his way out towards the 23-yard line. Maybe the 22. It'll depend on the spot on the near side. But a short gain brings up second down and long. It'll be second and eight as they do spot the ball to 23. Now yeah, Clark able to get the Wolverines a couple yards there. I love that play call on the touchdown coming after the, the turnover on uh, the, the turnover on the fumble from Seneca Valley. Great job by Williams going to the air there. We'll see if the Wolverines opt to go to the air again and maybe use their speed because they have so much of it. Two receivers left, one to the far boundary right. Williams looks to the right, goes to that air that you were talking about, Eric. Finds Scipio who wiggles his way across the 30 to the 31 yard line and that gain of eight's enough for a Woodland Hills first down. Yeah, just a great pass quickly out of the hands of Deontay Williams to his trusty receiver, Scipio. And right away, you're thinking, just get that first downs. But, and he eventually does, but he was dancing around a little bit there. You thought he might not get it, but they are going to, in fact, get the first down there in Woodland Hills and uh, keep the ball moving up over the 30 yard line now. Yeah, there's no doubt that Scipio surged his way across the 30. Now, he did voluntarily retreat, but was able to power his way back to the 31 yard line, where it's first and 10 for Woody High. Movement up front early by Seneca Valley. No whistles blow as uh, in the NFL. That would be a free play, but instead it'll just be a gain of five for Woodland Hills, maybe four to the 35-yard line. And when you breach the neutral zone at the high school level, pretty sure there's supposed to be a penalty. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked, actually. That was quite obvious. It looked like two Raiders actually maybe jumped into the neutral zone there. But no call, but still a great, great play by Armani Bailey there, getting a nice little chunk of yardage for the Wolverines on first down. Just under six minutes to play in the first half. Woodland Hills up by seven. Two receivers to the short side right as Williams is going to hand off. Clark is met, but then wiggles free. No, that's Armani Bailey off to the races inside of Raiders territory to the 50. The 40 still on his feet. 30 to the 25, the 20, to the 15 where he is wrapped and brought down inside of the 10 at around the eight-yard line. And the Wolverines reverse the field quickly on a big run by Armani Bailey. Huge run there by Armani Bailey. Great job breaking tackles. You know, the first thing I did, Adam, after that was look right back to see if there were any flags after those three touchdowns called back on the Wolverines last week. No, no laundry on the field. Big run by Bailey. 55, 57-yard run by Armani Bailey setting up the Wolverines first and goal at the Seneca Valley 8 on the left hash. Two receivers right, one to the short side left. Hand off, Talon Brooks going right, then cutting back left, then wiggles back to his right-hand side where he shimmies his way inside of the five to the four-yard line where he's brought down by Evan Smith, the linebacker. But a gain of four brings up second in goal from the four. Yeah, just a nice job by Talon Brooks. Looked like he might be taken down earlier in that run, but he stays on his feet, getting a couple key yards there for the Wolverines down inside the five now. Clock continuing to wind under five minutes to play here in quarter number two. Woodland Hills on top by seven, 14 to seven. Two receivers left, one receiver to the wide side right. Good snap as Williams looked left, now tries to run to his right-hand side, throws it in the back of the end zone. A leaping grab by the Wolverine in the back of the end zone. And again on the touchdown reception, it's Tariq Scipio putting Woodland Hills on top, 20 to seven. Great job by Scipio, great hand. Just a wonderful pass too by Deontay Williams. Looked like he might get sacked, but he stays on his feet and he finds Scipio in the back of the end zone for six. Great job by Woodland Hills. Just a wonderful drive all overall. Yeah, we weren't able to see it on the Triangle Bar and Grill replay, but uh, the quarterback, Deontay Williams, just had a defensive lineman draped all over him. He was able to 
Uh, Standish ground and throw that ball into the back of the end zone where only Scipio could catch it. And the handoff now to Taylor Brooks, who wiggles his way to the goal line and into the end zone. And the Wolverines storm ahead by 15, 22 to 7, with 4.39 to play in the second quarter. We're going to step away back in 30 seconds. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. LG3 Entertainment is a first-class disc jockey and karaoke entertainment company that serves the Pittsburgh and surrounding areas. They offer a wide range of music entertainment for weddings, anniversaries, school dances, corporate events, and more. They also offer beautiful chair cover linen rentals to give your event the elegance it deserves. They offer many more services, so go to their website today and see why so many choose LG3 Entertainment for the best in family fun entertainment. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Four-yard touchdown pass from Deontay Williams to Tariq Scipio, followed up by a two-point conversion run by Taylor Brooks and the Wolverines on top of Seneca Valley, 22-7, with 4.39 to play in the second quarter. Adam Gusky and Eric Truly on the call for you here on the Woodland Hills Football Network as Williams end over and kick soars right into the hands of Seth Bake, who covers it up near the 45-yard line, and Seneca Valley will start this drive with great field position. Yeah, nice job by Bake to hold on to that. Sometimes you see that cream off a guy's hands, but he's able to hold on to that and get the Raiders great starting field position. But you don't mind it. I don't mind the uh, the, uh, the call there to, to do another squib kick or, you know, kick like an onside type kick there. So Seneca Valley, uh, they got the ball after Woodland Hills punted on their second possession. They fumbled the ball immediately, and the Wolverines took advantage, went to the air, 19-yard uh, touchdown pass to Tariq Scipio. Seneca Valley got the ball back and uh, a turnover on downs after a protracted drive. The Wolverines took advantage again. A big long run by Armani Bailey and then two plays later another touchdown pass to Tariq Scipio put the Wolverines on top 22 to 7 after a pair of Deontay uh, or rather a uh, Taylor Brooks two point conversion runs is on first and 10 for Seneca Valley from the 45. They go to the air where Matt Stanger catches the ball for a modest gain of three to the 48-yard line. Yeah, brought down quickly, which is a key. And, you know, this is a very, very important series here for the Wolverines defense. They've struggled close to halftime all season long in stopping teams from getting points and getting into the end zone. And this is – they have to do it. It's so important here. Keep the Raiders out of the end zone. Swings right, one receiver to the wide side left. West running to his left-hand side. Sliding his way free, but great arm strength there by Taylor Brooks to haul down West in the open field. and keep the game to only about a dozen yards from the Wolverine, or rather from the Raiders 48 to the Wolverines 40. Yeah, West almost slipped free there for six. He didn't have too many people in front of him, but just like you said, great arm strength from Taylor Brooks. Such a strong junior for Woodland Hills. With some help there by William Clark at the end of the play, but still a big first down run for Seneca Valley. Raiders are going to split two receivers to the wide side right. Tight end to the right of the formation as well. One receiver to the short side left. And now West will motion out of the formation as the quarterback Lawson runs to the line of scrimmage but gets no further as he is stacked up and tugged to the turf by a host of Wolverines. It's just good luck down at the bottom of that pile for Woody High. That'll bring up second down and 10. A nice job by Woodland Hills there. You know, there's tons of time still for Seneca Valley with three minutes now on the clock remaining until the half, so they don't really have to worry about the clock with where they have the ball for the most part, but uh, defense just has to do exactly what they need to do, what they've been doing all game. Trip stack to the left-hand side. One receiver to the far boundary left. Motion man from right to left. Cuts up the field now as Lawson has some time. Throws it down the middle, and the pass is caught on the run by Connor Lichick. He was uh, the motion man who took off up the field and raced across the seam and finally caught inside of the 10 down near the six yard line. A touchdown saving tackle by a Woody High safety back there. Yeah, he broke free there. Woodland Hills have had a, has had a lot of trouble covering those kind of pass plays, those kind of routes right over the top. Lawson that time he connects. He's overthrown a lot of receivers today, but uh, nice tackle by Gavin Yarbo there to keep him out of the end zone, and hopefully the defense is able to stand strong here. 
Wolverine shaken up as well as it appears to be Gavin Yarborough, uh, the Wolverine who's slow to get to his feet. Looks like they're attending to his midsection. As it was a circumstance where he may have overstretched those abdominal muscles. And caught his breath, he's to his feet and will head to the far sideline under his own power. It'll be first and goal for Seneca Valley as Woody High on top of the Raiders, 22 to seven with 2.40 to play in the second frame. See how this goal line defense fares here against Seneca Valley. Interested to see what they go with here. I think with a lot of the big, their big boys up front, they're probably just gonna run this straight up the gut here a couple times against the defense. Sidecars to either side of loss, and the handoff's going to go to West, who found no real estate to his left-hand side. Tried to cut it back to his right, where he got to around the five, maybe the four-yard line, where he was undercut by a pair of Wolverines, and they'll now be second goal to four. Yeah, West is able to get a couple there, but Wilton knows does a good job of keeping him from getting any more. You see Rodney Stubbs in there, had a big game last week for the Wolverines at linebacker. Nice tackle wrapping up there. Smart play by Stubbs to not over-pursue to seal off that right side on the cutback and the ball comes loose. It's through the hands of West and the Wolverines drive West away from the rock and two Wolverines down at the bottom of the pile fighting for the football. It doesn't matter. It'll be Woody High ball as coming out of there with it appears to be Antoine Meredith with the fumble recovery. Great job there by Woodland Hills. Looked like they had something to do with that. We'll have to take a look at the replay and see if they did, but nonetheless, they take advantage of that, jump on that ball, pounce on it. It was free there for a little bit, and I don't think anybody knew it was It was fumbled. It was close to the ball right away, but uh, Woodland Hills comes up with it, and now maybe a chance to get back in the end zone here. Just under two minutes, you got time. But a long way to go. I think Woodland Hills, uh, I'm not sure that they've used any timeouts yet. I haven't been keeping track of that mental notes at this point. So one receiver right to the near side left as the Wolverines will go to the ground on first and 10 from around the eight yard line out across the 10 to the 11 goes the Wolverine ball carrier. And here's the replay on that fumble as West had the ball punched free. It looked like it was uh, Julius Brown, the first Wolverine to West and West dropped the ball and it felt like it was on the ground forever before two Wolverines dove towards it and it was Meredith who ended up coming out of there with it for the home team. Two receivers split right, one to the near side left, delay handoff as it is Taylor Brooks running to the right hand side and Brooks will be brought down a yard shy of the line of scrimmage at the nine yard line, bringing up second down and eight. Or third down and eight, excuse me. Timeout, Seneca Valley. So the Raiders take a timeout, and we will too. 22 to 7 is your score with 108 to play in the second frame. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented Seneca by State Valley's Senator Jay Costa. Timeout of the half. Whether you need a new website or want to improve your existing site, Web Landings can serve your needs. Web Landings provides professional, easy-to-maintain websites for businesses, organizations, and individuals. Discover more at weblandings.com and find out how editing your site can be as easy as using a word processor. Plus, we offer one year of free hosting for any website developed. Visit weblandings.com today. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Third and eight for Woodland Hills with the ball at the 10-yard line. The line to gain is the 18. Actually, they spun the ball initially at the 10. Now it's at the uh, nine-yard line, so still about third and a long eight or short nine for the Wolverines as they'll go to the ground. And Running to the left-hand side is William Clark as he's bounced around and finally brought down shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line. Uh, timeout, Seneca Valley, their third and final timeout of the half. So the Raiders use a timeout and we'll step away one final time. It's 22 to seven, your score in the second quarter. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been serving families in the Woodland Hills community since 1905 and is a member of the Hall of Excellence of the National Funeral Directors Association. 
Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home now offers crematory services at their Turtle Creek location. Families choosing cremation can have added peace of mind, knowing that their loved one never leaves the care of Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home. For nearly 115 years, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been honored to serve local families and to be a proud partner of the Woodland Hills communities. Fourth down and four for Woodland Hills as they get the punt away. End over and punt by Deontay Williams takes a bounce in favor of Seneca Valley where it's downed by a Wolverine right around the 37 yard line. The Raiders have used all three timeouts so they have no way to stop the clock other than uh, an incomplete pass or running out of bounds. However, they do have decent field position here, Eric, and this is a circumstance where if the Woodland Hills defense can get another stop, they take a huge chunk of momentum into the locker room. However, if Seneca Valley scores, they're able to rebound from the momentum the Wolverines have. Yeah, the offense has been great, but the, there's one blemish. It was that driver there. They couldn't get that key first down. Defense has to step up big here. Back to the field we go where it is first and 10 for the Raiders. Trips right as Lawson rolls to his right hand side. He feels the pressure as he throws the ball down this near sideline. It's intercepted. A racing Wolverine, Eshawn Carter, cutting from right to left, got underneath the football, outstretched the arms, grabbed a hold, and an INT. But there's a flag back here for roughing the passer. Oh, just, uh, I've got to see the replay on this one. Hopefully we have a shot of the roughing the passer that the officials call because that was an incredible interception by Eshawn Carter and to see that get taken away is just heartbreaking for Woodland Hills as they get the stop they need but the officials intervene and throw a flag on Woodland Hills. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Great job by Carter to get underneath that football and let's see if we get a, a shot of the release by Lawson. Okay, so Lawson gets rid of the ball there, and yeah, that, that seems pretty legit as uh, Julius Brown had to take two steps after Lawson got rid of the football and then made contact to the Seneca Valley quarterback, which negates a great INT by Eshawn Carter. So the Raiders now send trips to the left, one receiver to the short side right. Lawson is in the shotgun with West, the sidecar to his left. Motion man from left to right as Lawson pumps, then throws to that far corner, and it is just too long for the outstretched arms of Nick Cook. Cook was open for quite a while, but the pass hung up there and then fell innocuously to the turf. Late to the party was Eshawn Carter on coverage. Yeah, wide open there for Seneca Valley. Looked like uh, coming up the center there, it looked like Donnie Kreisberg had a lot of jersey there of a Wolverine, but I don't know if there have been any penalties on Seneca Valley here in the first half. So the two very costly penalties on Woodland Hills in this first half for, for sure, but got to fight through the adversity here if you're the defense and get another stop. Again, trips left, one receiver to the short side right. Lawson's in the shotgun with West to his left. Low snap as Lawson is pressured. He slides through that pressure, now steps forward. He's gonna have to tuck and run as he cuts to the near side right, retreating, and he is wrapped and brought down in the open field by Antoine Meredith. Great open field discipline by the Woodland Hills defense to not overcommit on Lawson, bringing up this third down and 10. Yeah, we'll see if they spike it or they go for the play here. Lawson with just about 10 seconds left. Looks like they might just take a chance at a play. On third down. Third and nine as they go to the air. The pass to the right-hand side is incomplete as the receiver hit very hard. Seth Bake went up to catch it. He's hit hard by Eshawn Carter, and the incomplete pass stops the clock with four seconds to go here, and it's fourth down and nine for the Raiders. And we'll see if Woodland Hills wants to talk this over here with a timeout or if Coach Boster just opts to let it ride and see what happens here. One play now on fourth down. Just got to make sure you don't let him get in the end zone here. And this is a circumstance where Seneca Valley doesn't have a timeout, so they have to do this within the confines of the play clock. Lawson, shotgun, twins left, one receiver to the near side right, and the flag comes in for delay of game Prior from the official snap. down the field. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth on. 
And that's a, an instance where the Seneca Valley coaching staff just not cognizant of the fact that, you know, they're, they're using up a bunch of time while the clock is stopped, but the play clock doesn't stop in that circumstance. Certainly, Woodland Hills uh, backs them up five yards after that penalty. Hopefully they can still get the stop here. Fourth down and 14 for the Raiders. Straight drop back for Lawson. Pumps, has all kinds of time. Now he's pressured, rolls to his right-hand side where he's hit as he releases the football. The pass is up in the air, bobbled, and then caught by Seth Bake, but it'll be a stat sheet stuffer and nothing more as Bake is brought down well shy of the goal line, and we head to halftime with Woodland Hills holding a double-digit lead on the Seneca Valley Raiders, 22-7. to We are going to step away when we return. Our halftime coverage gets underway. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders with your halftime score. Woodland Hills, 22. Seneca Valley 7 on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd District since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to SenatorCosta.com. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale has recently been named among the 33 best sandwich shops in America. But folks in the Woodland Hills communities have known that for over 80 years. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're sure to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been serving families in the Woodland Hills community since 1905 and is a member of the Hall of Excellence of the National Funeral Directors Association. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home now offers crematory services at their Turtle Creek location. Families choosing cremation can have added peace of mind, knowing that their loved one never leaves the care of Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home. For nearly 115 years, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been honored to serve local families and to be a proud partner of the Woodland Hills communities. Woodland Hills football is brought to you in part by the law offices of Owen Seaman. Owen is a Woodland Hills alumnus who studied law at Duquesne University and has been practicing law in the Pittsburgh area for over 15 years. Attorney Owen Seaman's experience encompasses virtually every facet of criminal defense. If you find yourself in need of criminal defense representation, call Owen at 412-721-0412 or visit owenthelawyer.com. Excella Health wants to know, how can we help you today? Can we help you find a doctor? Schedule a same-day appointment. Choose just the right service for your health concern. As your health care partner, Excella offers hundreds of primary care and specialty doctors, along with outpatient testing, rehab, and nationally recognized heart care, surgery, and orthopedics. To learn more, visit ExcellaHealth.org or call 1-877-771-1234. Tired of a dirty car? Mr. Magic Car Wash will have your vehicle looking new again in just minutes, even those tough to clean wheels. Try us out at any one of our five convenient South Hills locations for a car wash you won't soon forget. Mr. Magic Car Wash, clean, shiny, and dry every time. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Halftime at the Wolverina as Woodland Hills leads Seneca Valley 22-7 on homecoming Friday night in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky alongside of Eric Schuley. It's our halftime coverage as Woodland Hills again has this 15-point lead at the mid-game break. Seneca Valley started the game with the ball first, punted it away to the Wolverines. They started their drive at their own 40-yard line and just a few plays later, 27-yard touchdown run by William Clark. Two-point conversion attempt failed, and the Wolverines were up 6-0 at that point. Seneca Valley started their next drive at the 36-yard line and answered back with a 27-yard touchdown run of their own on uh, the touchdown run by West of 27. The PAT up and in 
made it 7-6 Seneca Valley. The Wolverines went three and out on their next possession, and the Seneca Valley Raiders started their next drive at their own 20, but on first down, the Raiders fumbled the football. Lawson lost it, and it was covered up by William Clark, and the Wolverines went to the air and struck quickly on a 19-yard touchdown pass from uh, Williams to Tariq Scipio. Taylor Brooks into the end zone for a two-point conversion. At that point, it's 14 to seven. Woodland Hills. Seneca Valley started the final drive of the first quarter at their own 32-yard line transition into quarter number two, where Woodland Hills finally uh, forces the Raiders to turn the ball over on downs, and the Wolverines go on a protracted drive and cap it off on a four-yard touchdown pass from uh, Williams to Scipio. Again, that uh, fourth and or goal line situation was set up by a long run by Armani Bailey, and again, it's Taylor Brooks into the end zone for a two-point conversion, putting Woodland Hills up 22-7 at the half. Seneca Valley drove it into Woodland Hills territory again before fumbling it away. The Wolverines not able to capitalize on that fumble and ended up having to punt it away with under a minute to go. And the Raiders ended up finishing up the half with the football, not able to get into the end zone. So the Wolverines take a bunch of momentum into the locker room on top of the Raiders 22-7 here, truly. Yeah, absolutely. The second half is going to be so key, but so crisp for Woodland Hills on both sides of the ball tonight. Other than a couple bad passes, penalties they've really been very very good on offense and defense against a very tough 6a Seneca Valley team which is very impressive to do, to do against against Seneca Valley so the, sec the second half is going to be key the Wolverines get the ball first so it, it really is important that they really take that ball down the field really demoralize the Raiders and get the ball in the end zone quick Again, 22 to 7 is your halftime score. We're going to step away and let you enjoy the Seneca Valley Band and the homecoming presentation here at halftime. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costner. A Boss Opticians on Braddock Avenue in Braddock is your one stop optical shop. With hundreds of the latest frame styles and lenses, the skilled opticians at ABOS will help select and fit the best eyewear option for you. Plus, ABOS Opticians is the best eyewear repair facility in the area. No matter what your eyewear needs are, make ABOS Opticians your opticians. Call ABOS Opticians at 412-271-4424 or visit abossopticians.com. Thanks for tuning in to the Halftime Show on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Woodland Hills Football is presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Wolverine Football is also brought to you by the Triangle Bar and Grill, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home, the Law Offices of Owen Seaman, LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek, Bush Brothers Car Care, LG3 Entertainment, web landings, and a boss optician. Now it's time for the second half. Beautiful night in western Pennsylvania for high school football. It's homecoming Friday night in Turtle Creek as the Woodland Hills Wolverines take on the Seneca Valley Raiders in an interclassificational matchup between the 6A Raiders and the 5A Woodland Hills Wolverines. Woodland Hills came into this game with just one victory on the season, and that came last week on the road at Kiskey as the Wolverines beat the Cavaliers 28-2, while Hemfield fell at home to the Seneca Valley Raiders 40-12 uh, in that 6A matchup a week ago. But right now at halftime, Woodland Hills stunning the Seneca Valley Raiders 22-7 as the Wolverines have dominated virtually every facet of this football game, and the defense has bent at times but has not broken air truly. Yeah, that's the key. Defense has to keep it up, and so does the offense. Got to keep your foot on the gas here with this opening drive especially. Woodland Hills received to begin the second half. It's caught on the run by Taylor Brooks, who cuts it to the far boundary. He'll cross the 40 where he's wrestled out of bounds and brought down by uh, Marciano McCowan. And it'll be first and 10 for Woodland Hills. Great field position out across the 40 towards the 43-yard line where it's first and 10 for Woody High. Yeah, Taylor Brooks, just another one of the many weapons that the Wolverines have. Very good junior, able to show his speed and agility there. Just a great little move there past Hayden Schultz there of Seneca Valley. Setting up the Wolverines, good starting field position on this very important opening drive. First and 10, low snap, the handoff, and running from right to left is William Clark, and he has wrestled down from behind, tackled by Evan Smith. 
Loss of three on the play, and it is second down and 13. Yeah, the Raiders come out quick there with a lot of speed there from Smith up the middle, pursuing Clark, taking him down for a loss. And uh, one thing the Wolverines are not going to be able to do to win this game, I don't think, is stay conservative. So they're going to have to mix things up a little bit if they want to keep this league. As you know, Seneca Valley wants to win this game. It's, it's non-conference, and it doesn't mean anything towards the playoffs, but they certainly do not want to lose this one. Shotgun again, motion man is Williams from left to right, and the handoff will go up the middle instead as Taylor Brooks spins his way to the initial line of scrimmage, at least to the 42, before he is brought down by a trio of white jerseys. Evan Smith again at the bottom of the pile for the Seneca Valley Raiders. Yeah, one thing we have not seen from t tonight from Woodland Hills is Deontay Williams keeping that ball and that Maybe that run pass option or even just when they know it's a run and, you know, keeping it, tucking it and keeping it from uh, Clark or Brooks and just keeping it himself and running. We haven't seen that. So interested to see if we will see Williams do any of that tonight. Williams runs to the right, has some room if he cuts it back to his left-hand side. Now he will step forward across the 45 side, steps a tackler inside of Raiders territory at around the 49-yard line where the tackle is made by Gabe Lawson. And the bad news for the Raiders is their QB, DB, is slow to his feet. Yeah, Lawson definitely was slow. He's able to get back up. Did slight limp there, but uh, you do in a game like this, you do not want to lose your star senior quarterback a couple weeks away from the playoffs. So we'll see if Seneca Valley pulls him back out here on their offensive drive. But so close there by Williams, almost gets that first down. They'll have to punt the ball away. Punt unit on for Woodland Hills. Williams catches a good punt, snap, and gets away a low lo uh, wobbler, which will bounce in favor of the Wolverines and continued to roll forward where it was touched by William Chamberlain. And that was an ill-advised touch by Chamberlain because he had the opportunity to allow that ball to continue to bounce its way down the field. Yeah, Adam, it did look like it was going to keep rolling down deeper. Yeah, into, into, into Seneca Valley territory, but Chamberlain touches it, and hopefully that won't hurt the Wolverines' defense here. As you know, Seneca Valley is going to come out firing here. Because they, they need to get this ball into the end zone quick here to uh, create some momentum for themselves early in this second half. Woodland Hills just taking two minutes and 18 seconds off of the clock on the first drive of half number two. And now we'll see Lawson run to his right and then cut it back to the left. And he is off to the races inside of Woodland Hills territory to the 50, the 40. Finally caught from behind by Taylor Brooks. Sean Carter was in the vicinity as well. But a big pickup turns the field for the Raiders from their own 24 inside of the Wolverines, 30 to the 29. Yeah, absolutely at all. Not how you want to start here if you're Woodland Hills in the second half. They've been tortured in the second half all season long, and it's starting that way again as Lawson breaks free and, and not able to break away from the Wolverines completely, but just a huge run for Seneca Valley as they get inside the 30 of Woodland Hills, and they got Woodland Hills got to put a stop to this quick. 47-yard run for Lawson as he steps under center. He'll hand off to West, who lowers his shoulders, gets to the line of scrimmage, and then is driven to the turf. Rodney Stubbs, amongst others, in on the tackle for Woodland Hills. Also at the bottom of the pile, Julius Brown. Yeah, Seneca Valley going under center there, back to that eye formation. Haven't seen much of that from either team tonight, if any at all. Not much doing there as Wolverine stuff that. Creating a second and about nine here for Seneca Valley. Second and nine for the Raiders. The ball favoring the left hash at the Woodland Hills 28-yard line. Wins to the right, one receiver to the far side left as Lawson changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Sidecar to his right is West. Lawson feigned the pitch running to his right. Instead, he'll be swallowed up by a pair of Wolverines as he crosses the line of scrimmage and is brought down as he approaches the 26-yard line. That'll bring up third down and make it eight as they only credit him as getting to the 27. Now they'll spot the ball at the 26. Yeah, I thought he would try to pitch that ball to West. Armani Bailey had that covered up pretty well, but Lawson himself did not have much running room at all. Great job by Woodland Hills there, keeping their lanes, taking down Lawson. And now no man's land. See if they try and get half and half here on third and fourth down. Third and seven as the Raiders go to the air. They throw to the right-hand side where the pass is complete to Bake. And Bake is shouldered out of bounds by Armani Bailey. It'll be enough for a first down inside of the 15 to the 14-yard line. 
Yeah, Wolverines covered that play very well last time. Seneca Valley did it, but this time it works much better for the Raiders and uh, able to get the first down there. They don't need to even attempt a fourth down try as they get it on third down. And now the ball inside the red zone for Seneca Valley. And just Wolverines have to shut the door on this. This is absolutely how they did not want to start here in the second half. We saw the Wolverines with a red zone takeaway in the second quarter as they took the ball away from the Raiders. This time they'll go to West, who was the guilty party in that fumble in the second quarter. The pitch to West, he runs to his left, and he is brought down in the backfield. Loss on that play of about a handful back to the 19. Yeah, nice job by Woodland Hills there. Stringing it out and taking West down. Eshawn Carter in on that play. Looks like West slipped a little bit, but uh, three Wolverines there. I don't know if West was going to do anything there with that pitch. So it's second down and 15. The line to gain is the uh, four-yard line. The ball currently placed at the 19 on the left hash. Twins to either side. Straight drop back. Lawson pressured. He's wrapped, and he will throw that ball away at the feet of West. And... You know, I, I mean, how much more does the quarterback have to be in the grasp prior to uh, the official blowing the whistle? And that's a circumstance where the quarterback, Lawson, gets bailed out. Well, of course, it wouldn't have been intentional grounding because he threw it right at the feet of an eligible receiver. Yeah, I thought we might see the whistle there. It was close. Two Wolverines, looks like Thomas Sheard and maybe Talon Brooks. Not sure had him there in the backfield and almost brought him down for a huge sack, but he's able to get rid of the ball. Now a third and long. So it's third down and 15 at the 19. Motion man from right to left. Straight drop back for Lawson. Has some time. Looks to his right-hand side. Finds West in the open field. Tries to sidestep Taylor Brooks and will take it inside of the 10 to around the 9-yard line. That's not enough for the first down. So it'll be fourth down and about six from the 10 as that's where they will spot that football. Another huge fourth down as Wolverines look to drop a lot in coverage there as Seneca Valley not letting any of the four Wolverines who are rushing the passer through. Some good blocking there. Gets the ball out to West and just another great arm tackle by Taylor Brooks. Second time we've seen that tonight, Adam. Yeah, good arm strength, great grip by Taylor Brooks. So again, it's fourth down and six. The line to gain is the four yard line. Lawson in the shotgun, trips to the left, one receiver to the short side right. West, the man to his right hand side. Lawson has some time, throws it into the end zone where it is broken up by Tariq Scipio and the Wolverines force the Raiders to turn it over on downs again. Yeah, just great coverage there by the Wolverines. Scipio unable to get the interception, but hey, you got the ball back in your hands. That's the most important thing. And uh, defense stands strong once again, dropping more back into coverage. And you uh, to see that on the replay again as Scipio upset he was, was unable to ensure the interception. But like I said, you're just happy to get the ball back, turn over on downs, get the ball back in the offense's hand. Hopefully they can put together a nice drive here. Tariq Scipio, second pass breakup of the game to go along with a pair of touchdown receptions, making a case for him being our state senator, Jay Costa, player of the game. Two receivers split to the right as the Wolverines go to the ground again. And the Wolverine ball carrier is swallowed up. That's Armani Bailey with not much running room as he gets to the line of scrimmage and no further. That'll bring up second down and 10 from the 10. Yeah, the Raiders are all over this rushing uh, attack by the Wolverines here early in the second half. So I think you, if, if you're the coaching staff for Woodland Hills, I know it's risky, but you might want to try putting the ball in the air here. They had success with it last week. They've had success with it for the most part tonight when they have put it in the air. Deontay Williams... 5 of 7 for 54 yards and two touchdown passes. Williams in the shotgun, twins right. One receiver to the near side left. Williams going to run it himself. Looks to turn the corner on that right-hand side, and he'll actually be hauled down from behind. Nice pursuit by Josh Miller, the tight end linebacker, the junior for Seneca Valley. Yeah, nothing doing there. The Seneca Valley just pursuing it so well. And again, this rushing attack just not working right now for Woodland Hills. As you see Seneca Valley get through there quick and take Deontay Williams down. Nice job by Miller for Seneca Valley. Another big third down here, and Woodland Hills is going to have to have some success here on offense. They're going to keep this lead. So third and 11 for Woody High with just under five minutes to play in the third quarter. Wolverines using a lot of play clock here as they send two receivers left, one to the short side right. Williams. Tosses it deep down the field for Scipio. Leaping grab by Tariq Scipio, but he is out of bounds when he comes down with it. On the coverage for the Raiders is Nick Cook. 
And the Wolverines are going to have to bring the punt unit on. Yeah, not a bad idea there. I, I would have liked to have seen maybe Scipio run that route in the middle of the field, maybe up the seam or something. Doesn't have much room there. He's running that route to the short side there. And makes a nice grab, but it looked like Deontay Williams was hit a little bit late there, but no, no call there on the refs. As you see, Scipio looks like he did, uh, didn't come down with it anyway, but uh, great attempt there by Scipio. So pivotal punt situation here for the Wolverines. Good snap and the punt away by Williams, a wobbler that is caught on the fly by Brandon Weaver in the Wolverines punt coverage unit is all over Weaver not long after catching that football. Four black jerseys were there to bring him down near the 35. They'll say he got out to the 33 maybe before finally being brought down. We'll see where the ball's officially spotted once the two teams settle things down. 4.31 to play third quarter. Woodland Hills up by 15, 22 to seven. This was your halftime score. Here in the second half, the Wolverines got the ball first and punted. The Raiders got the ball at their own 24-yard line, turned the field on a long run by Lawson, but the drive stalled, and the Wolverines turned the Raiders over on downs. The Wolverines punting it back to Seneca Valley, who has it first and 10 at the Woodland Hills 35 on this drive. Straight eye backfield behind Lawson. We've seen this a few times tonight for the Raiders. And Lawson is going to hand off, and it's Stanger, the ball carrier, who lowers his shoulders and drives his way towards the 30-yard line for a gain of five. And it's second down and five. Credit the tackle for Simon Givner, linebacker for Woody High, 6'1", 267-pound junior. Yeah, Seneca Valley going back under center there. Some old-style football there, using their big boys up front to get a nice gain on first down. See if this defense got to come through big again. A lot to be asked of them here in this second half tonight. Just under four minutes to go as the Raiders split two to the right-hand side and again Stanger on the ground for Seneca Valley. Muscles his way towards the first down flag before Rodney Stubbs makes the stop. It'll be a gain of five and a first down for Seneca Valley. Yeah, that's working right now for Seneca Valley. Just running that ball straight up the middle with Stanger. He's got some nice size and speed, so as we saw last year, he hurt the Marines a lot in the same game at Seneca Valley last year. The Marines defense now uh, needs to get a stop. Stanger, six feet, 200 pounds, senior tailback. Play action as Lawson runs to his right-hand side. He's pressured by Milton, gets it away, throwing it to the 15-yard line where it's caught on the run by Seth Bake, and the tackle made by Eshawn Carter, the Woodland Hills defensive back who's been all over the field. Yeah, Carter has had a great game tonight, had that great interception taken away by the roughing the passer call, but good coverage there from Carter. That was just a great, great throw on the run by Lawson and a great catch there by Bake. Just very good execution there by Seneca Valley. Not much you can do if you're Woodland Hills. Gain of nine on that play as they spot the ball at the 16, so it's second down and one. Maybe a bit of miscommunication between the center and the rest of the offensive line, but the snap is just in time, and some pushing and shoving after the whistle, but no flags fly. As Matt Stanger has enough for the first down for Seneca Valley, brought down at the 12-yard line. Yeah, Seneca Valley on the move here after that play. It looked like 50, number 56 for Seneca Valley, Chase Nething. Big shove on, I think it was Taiwan Milton, but no call. The refs have not thrown many flags, period, tonight, but certainly very few against Seneca Valley. Straight eye backfield as Lawson's going to keep it on the ground, running to his right-hand side. And I'm not sure what the motivation was there other than, uh, you know, picking up minimal yardage from the 12 to the 11 and a half yard line. And a Wolverine is slow to get up as the uh, injured Wolverine is Thomas Sheard. As he clearly has an issue with the right leg. We'll take this opportunity to step away as well with 2.22 to play third quarter. Woodland Hills up by 15. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd district since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 
241-6690 or log on to senatorcosta.com. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale has recently been named among the 33 best sandwich shops in America. But folks in the Woodland Hills communities have known that for over 80 years. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're sure to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. Thomas Sheard, a 6'4", 242-pound senior defensive lineman, shaken up. Good news is he is up to his feet and headed to the sideline under his own power, albeit with a bit of a hitch in his getty up. Seneca Valley with the football, second down and nine at the Woodland Hills 11-yard line. This is the second time the Raiders find themselves inside of the Woody High red zone here in half number two. They turned it over on downs on their previous possession. and The last possession of the half, they... Uh, saw the half end with the ball in their hands in a similar circumstance as the ball carrier this time is Stanger and he will drive his way to about the six yard line and a flag is down as well. And we will check in with our referee, John Carson, but the initial call was a hold against the visiting Raiders. Pony on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. So that spot of foul penalty was actually about three yards deep in the backfield. Because the line of scrimmage was around the 11 yard line. And that pushes the ball back to the 24. The line to gain is the four. So it's second down and 20. Maybe second down and about 22, in fact, is the. Raiders go to the air. Seth Bake, the intended receiver, and the pass soars through his outstretched arms incomplete, bringing up third and 22. Once again, the line to gain does appear to be right around that two yard line, Eric Schuler. Yeah, that was uh, Lawson unable to connect there with Bake. He had him pretty, not wide open, but he had pretty decent coverage by Wilton Hills. But if he connects on that, uh, that's going to be damage done for uh, Seneca Valley on Woodland Hills, but uh, fortunately for Woodland Hills, the pass is too high from Lawson again, and it creates a third and very long here. See if they try and uh, get some of it on third down and the rest on fourth, or if they try and go for it all here on third down. Twins to either side, sidecar to the left-hand side of Lawson, straight drop back for the Raiders QB who has time. Now he's wrapped, and he is sacked. Tried to wiggle out of it to no avail, and you will credit the sack to the Wolverine, Zachary Threats. The linebacker came from his left outside linebacker position and made the stop, and it's fourth and long for the Raiders. Great job by Zachary Threats on the whole defensive line by Woodland Hills there, creating the pressure. You see Savon Gibner coming up the middle, and then Zachary Threats able to finish the job. They're not letting Lawson break free. That was the key, because he, he, he has the ability to do that, unable to do that there, and now just another huge fourth down. If you're Woodland Hills, you have to stop this. Got to credit the secondary as well, Eric, because they uh, produced the time to allow threats to get to the quarterback, Lawson. Lawson, throwback screen coming to the near side, right in Taiwan. Milton sniffed it out from a mile away. The pass was complete to Marciano McCowan, but uh, Taiwan Milton read it, and he burst through and knocked McCowan to his backside. Turnover on downs again, and it's Woody High football at the Raiders' 37-yard line. Yeah, Seneca Valley tries a bit of misdirection there, but Taiwan Milton, he has just been so great for Woodland Hills this year at his linebacker position, and just a great tackle, wrapping up and making the stop for the Woodland Hills defense. And now the offense back on the field. This is an opportunity to really get down the field here and get a huge touchdown. They've had they've had some uh, struggles here in the second half, the offense has, but better field position here. That's key. I misspoke. This is uh, the ball at the Woodland Hills 37, not the Raiders 37. Two to the right, one receiver to the near side left as the Wolverines go to the ground again. William Clark burst free, first down and more. Pickup of a dozen to the 49. Will Clark can do that for you. He is so good at evading tacklers and even just using his muscle and ability to get through tacklers. He did it last year just like running back Anthony Meredith did. And he does it again right there as he slips through a couple tacklers there so well. And 
so much leg strength, able to get a big first down for Woodland Hills right around midfield. Woodland Hills sends two receivers right, one to the short side, left. Hand off again to Clark, who had a crease for a moment, but it closed quickly, and Clark will end up just picking up about two yards to the midfield stripe. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Adam. He had a hole, and you could see he saw it as he burst through it with his acceleration, but he got tripped up there, unfortunately, for Woodland Hills, because if he doesn't get tripped up there, he may not have been caught as we, uh, looks like that'll be the last play of the third quarter. Yeah, Woodland Hills head coach Tim Boster told quarterback Deontay Williams, settle down, we're gonna let this clock expire and take this 15 point lead into frame number four. Woodland Hills on top of Seneca Valley, 22 to seven. We head to the fourth quarter. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Life has its ups and downs. There are times when you or a loved one needs help. That's why you should know the name LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center. Located just minutes from the Monroeville Mall, the LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, has been known by locals for many years, and they excel in reputation, rehabilitation, recuperation, and residential living. The help and answers you need are just a phone call away at 412-825-9000. Also on the web at lgar.org. LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, a a name you should know and a name you can trust. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Set to begin the fourth quarter, Woodland Hills on top of Seneca Valley, 22 to seven. As again, the Woodland Hills defense continues to come up big in big situations turning the Seneca Valley Raiders over on downs two times after Seneca Valley drives the ball into the Woodland Hills red zone. And now the Wolverines have the ball, second down and eight at the 50-yard line with an opportunity to go on a protracted drive and get some more points. Woodland Hills goes to the ground. William Clark spins out of tackle and ends up driving his way towards the 45-yard line before he is wrapped and brought down. Nice job there by William Clark. He really fought through that. Looked like he wasn't going to be able to get anything there, but does a wonderful job of spinning out and just getting even just a few there. That was very key there to get some yards there to create a third and a much more manageable four yards, but a long four. So third down and four for Woody High with the ball at the Raiders' 46-yard line. Two receivers split to the left, one to the short side right. Williams in the shotgun, hard count, hands off Clark. Clark running to his left, lowers his shoulders. Shows some strength here as he takes the ball towards that first down flag with some blockers in front of him. And that should be enough for the Woodland Hills first down. We've seen circumstances much like this earlier in this football game. Yeah, it's really going to depend on the spot. It definitely looked like he had it from our angle. We're gonna pick up this ball and re-spot it, and it definitely looks like a first down. I think they might measure it, though. Yeah, it looks like they are gonna bring the sticks out here, because this is a situation where the officials have had the propensity to spot balls at the beginning of drives right at a yard marker. However, this particular set of downs started just past the Woodland Hills 48-yard line, meaning the line to gain is just inside of the Seneca Valley 42. So we're going to have to stretch the change here, chains here and see if it's shy or not. And inches short of a first down. Love to see the Wolverines go for this here. you got nothing to lose at this point. You know what else I noticed there, Adam? Josh Rawlings is on the field yeah. for Woodland Hills, and that's, that's a lot of heart and fight to see a guy, a senior out there with a, with a uh, D1 scholarship to Virginia out there playing, possibly through an injury. It just that, That's great to see. You know the Wolverines want this win. Yeah, the homecoming king out there on homecoming Friday playing tight end for his squad. So let's see what Woodland Hills is going to do here on fourth down and inches. Wolverines going to set in the shotgun. Now Williams steps under center. And he will surge his way forward to the 41-yard line, and that'll be enough for the Woodland Hills first down. Uh, I love the call there. Williams has done that sneak a few times this year. It's worked, I think, every time he's tried it. Just a great job there by Woodland Hills. A great call there. And getting the first down and more of an opportunity here to milk this clock. But even more important, if the Wolverines can just get the ball in the end zone. 
Great vision there as he saw Evan Smith coming in. Evan Smith favored the right-hand side on that particular play, and that allowed Williams to kind of lean to his right and surge forward for the first down. Clark, the ball carrier, sidesteps a tackler inside of the 35-yard line, carrying white jerseys with him as he's brought down just shy of the first down flag. Yeah, it just keeps moving. Sometimes it's unbelievable to see how William Clark can keep moving through his tacklers, even with the speed that he moves as he's being contacted by several Raiders. He wanted that first down. He just came up short, but it's a second and short here for Woodland Hills. Very manageable at about the 32. Two receivers right, one receiver to the short side left. The ball's on the left hash. As the Wolverines move prior to the snap, both the right guard and right tackle move early. On the offense, five yard penalty remains second down. So instead of second and short, it's now second down at about a half a dozen from the 37 yard line. Two receivers right, one receiver to the wide side left. Quick snap here, Williams is gonna hand off. The Wolverines catch the Raiders sleeping here as it's William Clark inside of the 20 and he'll be spun down inside of the 15 as he has his helmet ripped off by Evan Smith and this will tack on yardage to a big run for the Wolverines tailback, William Clark. Yeah, William Clark, such a hard run there. Great job by the offensive line, opening up a hole for Clark. You can see he got up saying, where's the flag? And it was right behind him, it was thrown. The correct call there, as his helmet comes off, he's gonna have to leave the field of play for one play. But we'll see Woodland Hills now inside the red zone after that big run by William Clark. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first on. So Clark was tackled at the 17. They'll take it half the distance, so it'll be right around that eight yard line. We'll see where the ball's officially spotted by our umpire, and it'll be right at that eight. So first and 10 for Woodland Hill, first and goal rather for Woodland Hills, as this drive has eaten up clock, chewed up yards, and now an opportunity for the Wolverines to punch it in and extend this lead beyond the 15 points that it stands at right now. Yeah, very good to see that William Clark is okay, because after taking a second look at that, that was a very dangerous tackle by Evan Smith, ripping off the helmet of William Clark. Motion man is Armani Bailey who takes the handoff on the jet sweep, cuts it up the field instead, and he'll drive to the seven yard line for a gain of about a yard and a half, bringing up second down and goal a little bit closer to pay dirt. And yeah, not much doing there, but Armani Bailey makes something out of nothing, even just getting a yard through there for Woodland Hills. Looked like he could have been taken down in the backfield, but a guy like Bailey can do that for you. He can get, get away from tacklers, juke out of moves there. Even looked like maybe they may have caught his face mask there as, he's, as he went by a defender, but nonetheless, Woodland Hills, second down. Clock will continue to wind here as the pistol snap and the ball carrier for the Wolverines is Zachary Threats, and he'll drive to the five before being shoved back. Tackle by Ethan West for Seneca Valley. And it's third and goal now at the five yard line. The ball on the right hash for the Wolverines. Yeah, Zachary Threats following his blocker there. Looked like Thomas Sheard there. But uh, get, get, able to get him a few, but not able to get him in the end zone here. You got third down and four as it's third and goal from the four yard line and got two chances to get this yardage now. The ball ultimately was spotted at the four as Eric said, so it is third and goal from that spot. Shotgun, delay handoff. Clark ran to the right, hesitated, then tried to drive his way towards the goal line, but will be brought down well short of the goal line at around the three. And that'll bring up fourth down and goal. We haven't seen Woodland Hills go for a PAT today, so you have to assume they're going for it here in this fourth and goal situation. Yeah, this is huge because you know if you, if you have a more reliable field goal unit, you could get this game to a three possession game, but uh, Woodland out. Hills is going to have to go for it here. Woodland Hills. So the Wolverines take a timeout. We will too. Stoppage on the field with 7.15 to play in the fourth quarter. Woodland Hills up by 15. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. 
Bush Brothers Car Care Center in Swissvale has been a Monongahela Avenue institution for four decades. Bush Brothers is a full-service mechanic and tire shop for all types of vehicles. Whether you need mechanical work, an alignment, state inspection and emissions testing, new tires, or just an oil change, Bush Brothers is the place for you. Bush Brothers Car Care Center, Monongahela Avenue in Swissvale, or give Martin and Jason a call at 412-351-5342. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Fourth down and goal for Woodland Hills. The ball at the three-yard line on the right hash. This drive started in the latter stages of the third quarter, and the Wolverines have driven the ball from their own 37 down to the Seneca Valley three. Two receivers split left, one to the near side right. Williams out of the shotgun, running to his right. He's going to tuck. He's going to run. He's going to waltz into the end zone for a three-yard Woodland Hills touchdown. Great job by Deontay Williams. He didn't force anything. He knew he had time, and he saw the lane, and he took it. And with his speed, he is incredibly hard to catch, especially at that distance. And uh, just a huge touchdown for Woodland Hills, going up 28-7, to looking to make it 30-7. to And a great job by Williams there. He looked left, going past the whole way, thought pass when he looked to his right, saw it wasn't there, and he just took off running. And a great decision leads to six more points for Woody High, extending their lead to 21 points with 7.08 to play here in the fourth quarter and the two-point conversion on the way. Motion man from left to right. The handoff goes to, again, Taylor Brooks. The Wolverines have run the same play on every two-point conversion, and it has worked out in all but one circumstance today. Well, we head to a break with Woodland Hills on top of Seneca Valley by 23 points, 30 to 7. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek is the official pizza of the Wolverina and has been a family tradition since 1971. Fox's Pizza also features tasty appetizers, fresh salads, as well as mouth-watering hoagies and sandwiches. Fox's Pizza in Turtle Creek is conveniently located in Penn Plaza, so stop in to pick up lunch or dinner or call to place your delivery order now at 412-823-9960. From Our Den to your den. It's Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 7.08 to play in regulation. Woodland Hills has extended their lead to 30-7 to on a three-yard touchdown run on fourth down and goal by quarterback Deontay Williams. He looked left, pass wasn't there so he decided to look back to his right and quickly tucked and ran and took it into the end zone for Woodland Hills TD and the Taylor Brooks two-point conversion leads to more points for the Wolverines and the Wolverines are going to get the ball on the uh, onside kick to that far sideline a Wolverine tipped it back at around the 49 yard line allowing a teammate to fall on the loose football at the Wolverine 49 we're going to be first down and 10 for the home standing Wolverines We'll see what the call is. I didn't know. I didn't think at first the ball went 10 yards. Well, it did. It was knocked and then back. It was knocked back. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't uh, know for sure if that was the case. It looks like the officials are talking it over, and hopefully this ball will stay with Woodland Hills. I mean, there is no doubt about it that the ball went 10 yards from the 40 to pass the 50 to the 49 yard line where it was then knocked back by a Wolverine and then covered up. The kick went 10 yards, rebounded back across the 50. Recovered by Woodland Hills. Well, thank you very much, John Carson, for confirming what we saw up here. First and 10 for Woodland Hills at their own 49 on the onside kick. That's definitely, you know, you see things like that. Sometimes it doesn't go your way. They make the wrong call. But fortunately, Adam, they make the right call there. And Woodland Hills gets the ball back here on the onside kick. And a chance to run more clock. And another delayed handoff and a hesitation and then a surge forward by William Clark inside of Raiders territory from the 50 to the 49, a pickup of two, and it's second down and eight. 
Yeah, it looks like two Wolverines shaken up on that play. And looks like Thomas Sheard and Jeremy Thomas are both hurt, and that's not what you want to see at all if you're Woodland Hills. Two guys that have done so much in their careers for the Wolverines, playing on the offensive and defensive lines, both shaken up, and you really hope that they're okay here. Well, it seems like Jeremy Thomas may just be a cramp, so they are going to just stretch that out. That's the good news. The problem is Sheard uh, may be a more serious circumstance as they are tending to uh, either an abdominal muscle or up underneath the shoulder pads in the rib cage area. So uh, this may be a more serious circumstance for Sheard. So we will take this opportunity to step away and Thanks to more of our sponsors. 6.48 to play fourth quarter. Woodland Hills on top by 23. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. LG3 Entertainment is a first-class disc jockey and karaoke entertainment company that serves the Pittsburgh and surrounding areas. They offer a wide range of music entertainment for weddings, anniversaries, school dances, corporate events, and more. They also offer beautiful chair cover linen rentals to give your event the elegance it deserves. They offer many more services, so go to their website today and see why so many choose LG3 Entertainment for the best in family fun entertainment. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Back at the Wolverino with 6.48 to play in the fourth quarter. Woodland Hills on top of Seneca Valley, 30-7. to Thomas Shear, the senior two-way lineman, shaken up. So we'll take this opportunity to take a look at the Woodland Hills schedule. Right now they are 1-6. Their lone victory coming a week ago in Vandergrift against the Kiski Cavaliers as Sheard gets to his feet and will head to the far sideline. Prior to that, the Wolverines lost their first six games, including uh, five games within the conference. The Wolverines have two more conference games coming up here at the Wolverine and next week. And then the following week, they travel to Chartiers Valley. You can see Woodland Hills and the Shard Valley Colts at the bottom of the Allegheny 8 Conference with no wins within the section. Wolverines go to the ground, and again, the delayed handoff, and William Clark is the ball carrier as he will surge to the 45 before being pulled back by Evan Smith, who has made the lion's share of the tackles for the Raiders. Yeah, nice run by William Clark there, doing what he could with what he was given. And Creates third down chance here for Woodland Hills, and uh, this would be extremely demoralizing to Seneca Valley if Woodland Hills is able to convert this. So we'll see if the Wolverines can get a big first down here on third down. Third and four, the line to gain is the 41-yard line, and William Clark breaks free to the far sideline after he was swallowed up. He's got the first down and more inside of the 40, inside of the 30 as he cuts it back inside of the 20, and finally wrestled down at around the 15-yard line. What a great individual effort by William Clark. It looked like there was nothing doing there, but he slid out of tacklers, took it to the far boundary, and took it all the way down inside of the 20 to the 15. And the Raiders coming on that run like Hawks there, but William Clark just so much strength as he breaks out of several tackles. Looks like three tackles there. He breaks and he reverses his field and gets a huge run. You got some shocked Seneca Valley fans right now. You probably have shocked Woodland Hills fans too. That was just an incredible effort by William Clark on a big first down run. Josh Miller and Evan Smith had him dead to rights, but he was able to slide out of those tackles and then take it down to the 15-yard line for a Woodland Hills first down where they now have it. First and 10 at the 15, they go to the ground again where Zachary Threats is the ball carrier, picking up a yard to the 14-yard line. And the clock continues to run down towards five minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Woodland Hills on top of Seneca Valley. Woodland Hills looking for the dagger here. If they can get this ball into the end zone. Deontay Williams leading the offense here on a second down. Let's see what the Wolverines look to do here. One receiver to the short side left, two to the near side right. Williams, hard count. Low snap, and he gathers it in and hands it off. And again, Zachary threats is the ball carrier, and he squirts free and into the end zone. He will go and check that. That's not threats. That's Talon Brooks for the Woodland Hills touchdown of seven yards. Yeah, just like more broken tackles by Woodland Hills, executing so well right now. Great run by Talon Brooks. 
You know, he's usually a guy you think more about his speed, not necessarily hard, tough running, but he's got the size. And uh, he, he just showcases his ability to break tackles and use his strength, his lower body strength there. Just multiple tackles he breaks through. So impressive there, especially the tackle from Mitchell Curran there that he breaks through was just just a great job by Taylor Brooks and the whole Woodland Hills offense there. 14 yard TD run for Taylor Brooks and he'll get the ball again on the two point conversion attempt and this time he is met and uh, pretty much everybody on the field knew Taylor Brooks was gonna get it on the two point attempt because he has gotten it every time on the two point attempts. That one fails and the Wolverines will maintain the 36 to seven lead with 436 to play here. We'll step way back in 30. It's the Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Whether you need a new website or want to improve your existing site, Web Landings can serve your needs. Web Landings provides professional, easy to maintain websites for businesses, organizations, and individuals. Discover more at weblandings.com and find out how editing your site can be as easy as using a word processor. Plus, we offer one year of free hosting for any website developed. Visit weblandings.com today. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 14-yard touchdown run by Taylor Brooks as he took it over right end and slid through tacklers and into the end zone he went for a Woody Hyde TD. And the Wolverines again with the short kick. This time it will be recovered by Seneca Valley and Ethan Westell end up driving his way out across the 45 to the 50-yard line where Seneca Valley is 50 yards away from pay dirt. But the problem is they trail the Wolverines right now by 29 points. The Wolverines have just outmuscled Seneca Valley in every aspect of this football game. Yeah, you know, a lot of people may look at this score and think, oh, Seneca Valley sat some of their stars, but no, nah, they got their starters in this game, and Woodland Hills has just punched them right in the mouth all night long, and you got to wonder if Seneca Valley just maybe looked past Woodland Hills thinking, oh, they're just one and six, but, man, the talent and athletic ability has really shown up tonight in full force for Woodland Time Hills. Woodland Hills. Well, the Wolverines call a timeout. And we'll step away, too, with 428 to play in the fourth quarter. Woodland Hills on top by 29. It's Wolverines and the Raiders on the Trib Live High School Sports Network and Woodland Hills Football Network, presented by State Senator Jay Costa. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been serving families in the Woodland Hills community since 1905 and is a member of the Hall of Excellence of the National Funeral Directors Association. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home now offers crematory services at their Turtle Creek location. Families choosing cremation can have added peace of mind, knowing that their loved one never leaves the care of Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home. For nearly 115 years, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been honored to serve local families and to be a proud partner of the Woodland Hills communities. First and 10 for the Raiders from the 50-yard line as they go to the air. The pass complete to the near side for James Spence, who leaps up, and he's brought down after picking up a first down. Tackle on the play by Frank Keyes, the freshman linebacker. Upset uh, alert right now. Baldwin on top of Bethel Park with a minute and a half left in the game, 21-14. Quarterback Lawson rolls to his right, and the pass is through the hands of the intended receiver, Nick Cook, and intercepted by a Wolverine at the 30-yard line. He is mobbed by teammates as they are clearly happy that the INT is caught by Devon McClinton, the 5'8", 132-pound freshman DB. Great job there for Woodland Hills. Tips right into McClinton's hand. He was in the right place, held on to the ball, made a nice interception. And uh, everything going right right now for Woodland Hills as we approach four minutes to go in this game. Just great to see so much effort and heart out there. So many teams would give up in a situation like this, but Woodland Hills and the coaching staff did not, and they came out firing tonight. And it's uh, so nice to see them, all their hard work pay off here with a big victory over a 6 a powerhouse in Seneca Valley. Yeah, Raiders came into today's game with a record of three and four overall, three and three within 6A play as uh, the Wolverines go to the ground. We'll see Antoine Meredith get the call. 
and the clock will continue to wind just under four minutes to go. Yeah, Seneca Valley, you know that same thing with them, though their record really isn't uh, indicative of how good of a team they are. They play against some very tough teams there in, in 6A, and they've had some very close games there. Some of their losses have been extremely close. Straight eye backfield as the Wolverines go to the ground. The ball comes loose. It's kicked around, and it will be scooped up by Connor Hayes, the defensive back for Seneca Valley, who's wrapped and brought down at the 32-yard line. So a fumble by the Wolverines leads to another possession for Seneca Valley. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, Seneca Valley with that 3-4 and four record overall, but beginning of the year they lost a very close game 10 to 7 to a extremely good central catholic team who put a pretty good whip in on pine richland recently 29 to 7 so they were very close to central they lost a very close game to mount lebanon this is a this is a quality team here in 6a that woodland hills really really showed up against tonight two receivers right two to the near side left as a new quarterback on the field for seneca valley is dustin horn the six foot junior and he completes the pass to nick cook over on this near side left. Getting back to that Wolverine fumble moments ago, that was Dante Gant on the fumble before it was recovered by Seneca Valley's Connor Hayes. So now it's second down to six as the clock continues to wind. QB, uh, Dustin Horn rolls to his right, throws to his right hand side, the pass incomplete over on that far boundary as Horn was looking for Connor Lizick. And that'll stop the clock with just under three minutes to play. Sorry about that, Adam. Uh, Seneca Valley wisely pulling Lawson out of the game now. You know, they had that scare earlier where they, he looked like he may have been injured, but he got up from that okay. But uh, he's somebody you don't want to lose. You know, this team was in the championship game last year against Pine Ridge on Heinz Field. They, they have the ability to do it again in six days. So you do not want to lose your quarterback. Trips right. Horn, straight drop back. Now he's going to tuck and step forward as he is wrapped and brought down at the 25-yard line. Nice open field tackle by the big fellow, Damon Taylor, 5'10", 325-pound sophomore. Yeah, Taylor has uh, had some snaps earlier in the game on the defensive side of the ball. You know, in the first half, playing without Josh Rawlings, uh, he came back in the second half for, for a little bit, but uh, you know, you're also playing without one of your best tacklers in Dewan Howes on that defensive line. Fourth and three as Horn goes to the air and now will throw to that right hand side where the pass is complete to Ethan West and he'll be wrestled down inside of the 10 at around the seven yard line. Tackle on the play by Frank Keyes, the freshman linebacker. And it's first and goal for Seneca Valley as that pass from uh, Horn to uh, Ethan West leads to a first down for the Raiders. Seneca Valley looking to get this ball to the end zone another time, make the score look a little bit better for their, on their end. Trip to the left of the formation as Horn goes to the air again. He finds Seth Bake, who is brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Good open field tackle by the Woodland Hills DB over here on this near side. Credit the tackle to Keyshawn Davis, the six foot junior. And nice job by Keyshawn Davis. He was, looked like he may have been able to slip out of that tackle, but Davis wraps up well and uh, takes him down. Horn off of the shotgun, throws to his uh, right hand side, and the pass is incomplete. As again, it was through the hands of Devon McClinton, who already has an INT here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, McClinton almost pulls in his second interception. And boy, if he'd have caught that one, he would have had room to run, that's for sure. But ball's incomplete. So now third down for Seneca Valley. Third and goal for the Raiders with 147 to play here in the fourth frame. So Woodland Hills will get their second win of the season. Unfortunately, both of them coming outside of conference play in back-to-back -back weeks. Straight drop back. Now Horn runs to his right, steps forward, and will be hit hard prior to getting to the goal line. He is blasted and brought down at around the one or two. He tried to tuck that and run. He had a little bit of success, but the Wolverines converge quickly on him there as he gets inside the five. And a big hit there laid on him, and uh, it'll be fourth down here as one of the last plays here as we get close to a minute left in this one. Tackle by Frank Keyes who has certainly made his presence known here in the fourth quarter, the freshman linebacker. So Horn on fourth and goal at the two is in the shotgun. Twins to either side. 
He's going to tuck, run right, then go back to the left-hand side. And he's got nowhere to go as he is brought down shy of the goal line. Turnover on downs as Jeremiah Ramsey makes the stop for the Woody Hyde defense. Yeah, Jeremiah Ramsey, I'm sure a name you're going to be hearing down the road for Woodland Hills. Got some great size, great tackling ability. He's also got a lot of speed. So uh, wait to hear that name in the future. And just a great job by Woodland Hills. Still putting in a lot of effort there, keeping Seneca Valley out of the end zone and keeping that seven points, the lone points for Seneca Valley on the night. As they came very early in the game, ever since then, you know, Woodland Hills has been so, so good on defense and offense. Five times today, Seneca Valley has turned the ball over inside of the Woodland Hills red zone. Four times turning it over on downs. So that is a testament to the never-say-die attitude of this Woodland Hills defense tonight on homecoming. Timeout, Woodland Hills. Uh, the official right next to the uh, PA system. Obvious feedback circumstance there. Timeout on the field, we'll step away too. Back in 30 here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills Football is brought to you in part by the law offices of Owen Seaman. Owen is a Woodland Hills alumnus who studied law at Duquesne University and has been practicing law in the Pittsburgh area for over 15 years. Attorney Owen Seaman's experience encompasses virtually every facet of criminal defense. If you find yourself in need of criminal defense representation, call Owen at 412-721-0412 or visit owenthelawyer.com. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. After a turnover on downs, Woodland Hills has the ball. First down and 10 at their own five-yard line as they will go to the ground in a big, hard, muscling run by Frank Keyes, who certainly made his presence known on the defensive side of the football, bangs his way out for a 16-yard gain on first and in from the five. Yeah, just a very tough run there by Keyes, and it's great to see some of these freshmen, who, you know, you're gonna have a future there. You got Deontay Williams, you know, who's, who has won that starting quarterback job. He's only a sophomore. This Good to see these freshmen, McClinton and Keyes, guys like that, and getting involved. Hand off again, I think it was Keyes who got the ball this time. Not much room, about a gain of two on the play, as we're down under 30 seconds to go here. And depending on when that ball is spotted, that may be the final play of this football game, and it looks like it will be. As uh, it's 36 to seven, Woodland Hills on top of the Seneca Valley Raiders. And that will be your final score. Woodland Hills improves their record to two and six on the season, while Seneca Valley, they fall to three and five on the year, but stay three and three within 6A play. Great game for Woodland Hills as they bounce back from a very rough start to this season and have responded well in their two non-conference contests. Yeah, I can't say enough about the players and the, and the coaching staff coming into this game. You know, it, Like I said before, a lot of teams would give up at that point, but that's not the Woodland Hills way, and that's not the tradition that this organization and, and team has. You know, They came out here so tough tonight, had a lot to prove, and really just completely dominated Seneca Valley. Take a look at the second half scoring recap. Woodland Hills started the ball first, uh, started with the ball first, punted it away. Seneca Valley drove the ball all the way down inside of the Wolverines red zone. And then a turnover on downs was capped off by a pass breakup by Tariq Scipio. Wolverines punted it back to the Raiders. And again, the Raiders took the ball inside of the Woodland Hills red zone. And again, the Raiders turned it over on downs. This time the Wolverines capitalized, starting the drive at uh, their own 37 yard line. And the 63 yard drive capped off on a three yard touchdown run early in the fourth quarter by Deontay Williams. The uh, two point conversion run by Taylor Brooks made it 30 to seven at that point. The Wolverines go for the squib kick where it's knocked back from inside of Raiders territory to the Wolverines end of the field where it was covered up at the 49 yard line by a Wolverine and not much longer later a 14 yard touchdown run by Taylor Brooks uh, puts the Wolverines on top 36 to 7 two point conversion fails uh, Seneca Valley gets the ball at the midfield stripe after a nice kick return on the ensuing kickoff but then an interception is thrown by the starting quarterback and uh, it was intercepted by Devon McClinton, 
The Wolverines fumbled it, gave it back to Seneca Valley, who again took the ball into Woodland Hills. Uh, red zone actually all the way down to a fourth and goal situation from the two and a stop was made at the five yard line and the Wolverines just ground out the end of that football game we're going to step away here for a couple of minutes and when we return we're going to take a run uh, through our post game superlatives and give you our thoughts on this Wolverine victory and look forward to the Wolverines final two no uh, conference tilts of the season against the Moon Tigers and the Chartiers Valley Colts back at a few here on the Woodland Hills Football Network State Senator Jay Costa is proud to represent Pennsylvania's 43rd district since 1996 and is happy to support the Woodland Hills football team. If you have an issue concerning state government, contact one of Senator Costa's three local offices. Senator Costa's offices offer a variety of services for constituents. You can reach Senator Costa's Forest Hills office at 412-241-6690 or log on to SenatorCosta.com. The Triangle Bar and Grill in Swissvale has recently been named among the 33 best sandwich shops in America. But folks in the Woodland Hills communities have known that for over 80 years. The Triangle, located on Monongahela Avenue, is the home of the Battleship, the sandwich that made Swissvale famous. Plus, the Triangle has a full menu of specialty sandwiches you're sure to love. Call the Triangle at 412-271-9885 to place your order now. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been serving families in the Woodland Hills community since 1905 and is a member of the Hall of Excellence of the National Funeral Directors Association. Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home now offers crematory services at their Turtle Creek location. Families choosing cremation can have added peace of mind knowing that their loved one never leaves the care of Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home. For nearly 115 years, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home has been honored to serve local families and to be a proud partner of the Woodland Hills communities. Woodland Hills football is brought to you in part by the law offices of Owen Seaman. Owen is a Woodland Hills alumnus who studied law at Duquesne University and has been practicing law in the Pittsburgh area for over 15 years. Attorney Owen Seaman's experience encompasses virtually every facet of criminal defense. If you find yourself in need of criminal defense representation, call Owen at 412-721-0412 or visit owenthelawyer.com. <laughs> Excella Health wants to know, how can we help you today? Can we help you find a doctor? Schedule a same-day appointment. Choose just the right service for your health concern. As your health care partner, Excella offers hundreds of primary care and specialty doctors, along with outpatient testing, rehab, and nationally recognized heart care, surgery, and orthopedics. To learn more, visit ExcellaHealth.org or call 1-877-771-1234. Tired of a dirty car? Mr. Magic Car Wash will have your vehicle looking new again in just minutes, even those tough to clean wheels. Try us out at any one of our five convenient South Hills locations for a car wash you won't soon forget. Mr. Magic Car Wash, clean, shiny, and dry every time. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. And we welcome you back to our post-game coverage as the Woodland Hills Wolverines defeat the Seneca Valley Raiders 36-7. Adam Gusky and Eric Shuley wrapping things up for you here in our post-game show as the Wolverines improve to 2-6 and six on the season, while the Seneca Valley Raiders, they fall to 3-5 and five on the year. An impressive performance by the Woodland Hills offense, but the Woodland Hills defense, I think, shown bright, brightest, Eric, not because they shut down Seneca Valley, but they shut down Seneca Valley in the most opportune moments. Seneca Valley had uh, so many opportunities, especially in the red zone. And Wilton Hills defense just stepped up so many times, able to make big stops, so many turnover on downs for, for Seneca Valley. And can't say enough about this Wilton Hills defense tonight and the offense, especially. A lot of underclassmen getting involved, which is good for the future. And, you know, 
you hope that they can keep this up into these into these conference games coming up. Yeah, Woodland Hills does have a pair of conference games coming up next week and the week after. Next week it'll be senior rec here at the Wolverine as Woodland Hills takes on the Moon Tigers, and then they'll wrap up the regular season on the road against the Chartiers Valley Colts. And, of course, we will have the coverage of both of those games right here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. A big win for Woodland Hills tonight as they upset a team out of 6A the Seneca Valley Raiders and the Wolverines avenge a loss up in uh, Cranberry a season ago as Woodland Hills fell last year at Seneca Valley. This year they get the win against the Raiders on homecoming night, a great homecoming night for the Woodland Hills Wolverines as they stepped out on top early, 6 to nothing. Seneca Valley answered back, making it 7-6, to six. but then the Wolverines, they uh, ripped off one, two, three, four, five unanswered touchdowns, taking a 36-7 victory over the Seneca Valley Raiders. We're going to take one more break, and when we return, it'll be the post-game superlatives, our player of the game and play of the game, as our post-game coverage continues here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Life has its ups and downs. There are times when you or a loved one needs help. That's why you should know the name LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center. Located just minutes from the Monroeville Mall, the LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, has been known by locals for many years, and they excel in reputation, rehabilitation, recuperation, and residential living. The help and answers you need are just a phone call away at 412-825-9000. Also on the web at lgar.org. LGAR, Health and Rehabilitation Center, a a name you should know and a name you can trust. Bush Brothers Car Care Center in Swissvale has been a Monongahela Avenue institution for four decades. Bush Brothers is a full service mechanic and tire shop for all types of vehicles. Whether you need mechanical work, an alignment, state inspection and emissions testing, new tires or just an oil change, Bush Brothers is the place for you. Bush Brothers Car Care Center, Monongahela Avenue in Swissvale, or give Martin and Jason a call at 412-351-5342. LG3 Entertainment is a first-class disc jockey and karaoke entertainment company that serves the Pittsburgh and surrounding areas. They offer a wide range of music entertainment for weddings, anniversaries, school dances, corporate events, and more. They also offer beautiful chair cover linen rentals to give your event the elegance it deserves. They offer many more services, so go to their website today and see why so many choose LG3 Entertainment for the best in family fun entertainment. Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek is the official pizza of the Wolverina and has been a family tradition since 1971. Fox's Pizza also features tasty appetizers, fresh salads, as well as mouth-watering hoagies and sandwiches. Fox's Pizza in Turtle Creek is conveniently located in Penn Plaza, so stop in to pick up lunch or dinner or call to place your delivery order now at 412-823-9960. From Our Den... To your den, it's Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek. Whether you need a new website or want to improve your existing site, Web Landings can serve your needs. Web Landings provides professional, easy-to-maintain websites for businesses, organizations, and individuals. Discover more at weblandings.com and find out how editing your site can be as easy as using a word processor. Plus, we offer one year of free hosting for any website developed. Visit weblandings.com today. You're tuned in to Wolverine Football, presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 36-7, the Woodland Hills Wolverines defeat the Seneca Valley Raiders to improve their record to 2-6 and six on the season. Adam Gusky and Eric Shuley with our post-game coverage here at the Wolverine on a beautiful, cool, crisp autumn night. It's homecoming here at the Wolverine, and the Wolverines host the Seneca Valley Raiders, and they send them off with a loss, dropping their record to 3-5 and five on the season. Eric, it's time to take a look at our post-game superlatives, and one player who I think is deserving of... Uh, Getting this superlative this week is Tariq Scipio. Four catches, 42 yards, a pair of touchdowns, two pivotal pass breakups, including one that led to a turnover on downs. Yeah, Scipio was all over the field tonight for Woodland Hills. You know, last week he made a very nice grab, made some good defensive plays as well. But this week, those two big touchdown catches, they were not easy balls to pull in. 
but he did great throws from Deontay Williams and he's a great uh, talented junior that the Wolverines have for next year so you got a lot to look forward to there great game by Tariq Scipio and the Wolverines got the game started off in style they shut down Seneca Valley on their first possession forcing the Raiders to punt and the Wolverines capped off a 60 yard drive on a 27 yard touchdown run by William Clark, and that is our Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home play of the game, that 27-yard TD by Clark. Yeah, it just showcased all of his abilities, you know, his speed and his strength and his agility show, were shown off so well there on that run by William Clark. He does everything so well tonight. He was great, 16 carries for 125 yards. He's just He's been the horse all year for the Wolverines, and it's great to see them get this big win tonight over Seneca Valley. Can't discount the performance today by Deontay Williams or the Wolverine defense. First of all, let's talk about the way Deontay Williams played today two touchdown passes he also ran one into the end zone he's looked so poised since he stepped in at starting quarterback for Woodland Hills yeah, yeah that that tough loss to West Allegheny was his first start and he did a great job in that game wonderful job last week and tonight as well you know he just looks so much like beyond a sophomore he plays like he's a senior he's been out there for years so that's great that the Wolverines have that to look forward to because it all starts with your quarterback and to have him coming back is huge and he'll be coming back as a junior for next year so Deontay Williams really did a great job of leading the Wolverines tonight to a huge victory and a remarkable performance by the Woodland Hills defense and so many individuals led to a great team performance as the Wolverines first forced the Raiders to turn the ball over countless times inside of the Wolverines red zone several times the Woodland Hills defense bent but they never broke but one time certainly you know they, they Seneca Valley was able to drive the ball but Woodland Hills was able to stop them every time almost that they get in the end zone only gave up one touchdown tonight and a lot of guys go both ways for Woodland Hills so that's important too that they can you know have be able to conserve their energy enough sometimes. Even guys like William Clark and Taylor Brooks, key contributors on the offensive side, go both ways a lot, and they, they have to play on the other side of the ball. But the defensive line did a great job. You saw Thomas Shear get hurt a couple times, but he was still out there. Josh Rawlings came into the game after halftime. Just, uh, just a great performance overall by the defense. Wolverines have a pair of conference games to finish up this regular season. They host the Moon Tigers a week from tonight here at the Wolverine. It'll be senior night, and uh, Vince Russo and Eric Shuley will be on the call for that one. And then Vince and Eric will bring things home to wrap up the 2019 season at Chartiers Valley as the Wolverines wrap up this season against the Colts. An opportunity for Woodland Hills to finish up the season with four straight wins. Yeah, I don't think uh, Moon will be taking the Wolverines lightly next week. You know, last time I checked, they were up on Upper St. Clair going into the fourth quarter by 13 points. So especially if they get that win, they are going to be very hungry for another conference win. But the Wolverines have a chance to play spoiler against the Tigers here at the Wolverine. It's, not, it's going to be one you don't want to miss. Yeah, the Tigers a much improved team this season. And I think it all started to roll when they got that upset victory over Peters Township. It sure did. They, they are much improved indeed. You could see it in the past couple years. They've been getting better and better. And looks like they're really hitting their stride this year so it's going to be a tough task for Woodland Hills but if they keep it up and play like they did tonight I don't think they can be beat. That'll do it for our coverage of the Wolverines and the Seneca Valley Raiders here on a homecoming Friday night in Turtle Creek. Want to thank our entire broadcast crew and my uh, broadcast partner Eric Shuley. Again your final score 36 to 7 the Wolverines defeat the Seneca Valley Raiders. We'll talk to you again next week as the Wolverines take on the Moon Tigers. We thank you for joining us on the Triv Live High School Sports Network and the Woodland Hills Football Network. Today's broadcast of Wolverine football was presented by State Senator Jay Costa on the Woodland Hills Football Network and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Wolverine football is also brought to you by the Triangle Barn Grill, Patrick T. Lanigan Funeral Home, the Law Offices of Owen Seaman, LGAR Health and Rehabilitation Center, Fox's Pizza Den in Turtle Creek, Bush Brothers Car Care, LG3 Entertainment, web landings, and ABOS opticians. This broadcast has been a presentation of A.W. Gusky Productions and LG3 Entertainment. Copyright 2019.